create new things they do not only invent innovate and create new things but nowadays considering the 21st century requirements i will say that engineers have different attributes to exercise they have to do different um, sectors they have to do different they have to offer different services and and a lot is expected from the uh, engineers uh, i have i have very uh, simple reasoning with this and this is the article published in times of india september 18 2003 dr bina desai works manager siemens healthcare factory there is an article in times of india and the crux of this article is that there are 10 unbeatable reason why one should be an engineer and i am proud that i am an engineer a greater understanding of how things work uh, it is it is our it is our in, uh, quality and characteristic that whatever happens we try to see how it happens uh, whether whether it is a machine whether it is some application we always try to see how it happens opportunity to invent design and build the society the society sees we as well as some scientists as we are the creators we are the inventors we are the innovators and whatever new things they are coming they are from the brain child they are all brain child of engineers so yes this is this is the privilege that engineers have got that is opportunity to invent design and build things the third is innovation is fun no we should take innovation as fun not with any stress that and and yes this experience will give us a happiness this experience will give us a satisfaction and this experience will also give us a quality that innovation is a fun learning is global nowadays with this internet at the fingertip we can connect get connected with anyone uh, initially it was very difficult to get connected i, I still remember when i was doing my <laughs> masters emi from college of engineering pune i wanted to have few papers those days uh, the internet was not so famous so we required to write a letter to uh, nic bangalore and then get some papers i paid few thousand rupees to get four four papers the xerox copy of four papers so it was very difficult those days but now it has become very easy that i can get connected to anyone and now the learning has become global uh, we even in our institutions also we we go for credit transfer we go for collaboration with foreign universities we go for collaboration with foreign institutions so now the learning has become global <coughs> yes we have that privilege to make a difference to society just see the pandemic situation what pandemic situation has created and you will now find that there are there are n number of innovations invention discoveries and the gadgets which had made our life very simple so yes we can make a difference to society it is a challenging work not only fun but it is a challenging work because let us say the civil engineer he builds a house he builds a society he builds a, a skyscraper he builds bridges so in such cases there is a sort of responsibility of safety and security so it is not very fun task but it is also at the same time challenging <laughs> we have a professional freedom there is a job satisfaction of course the job satisfaction is a relative term we can explore the world world and lastly yes we have the financial security So these are some of the ten unbeatable reasons why one should be an engineer. But are really these three are are really these ten matters a lot? Because nowadays the life is changing fast, the technology is changing fast, and at the same time the responsibility of engineers is also changing fast. If you Google it, you will find. If you just make a comment that which are the ten futuristic. inventions that may take place then you will get a list of n number of such type of prospective innovation that may take place in future and there are certain ten revolutionary approaches to the traditional engineering which has become now a sort of integration of disciplines 
not only now the, now the term interdisciplinary is also not there it is integration there is a possibility that even even i i think i have a plan i have my perception that there should not be branch of engineering i say that there should not be mechanical engineer i say there should not be civil engineer there should not be electrical engineer but there should be an engineer when a student takes admission in college he will take admission in engineering stream and in first year after first year he will try to understand what are his expectation what are his liking and accordingly from the basket of different subjects he will choose the subjects of his own interest some of the subjects may be from electrical engineering some of the subjects may be from mechanical some of the subjects may be from electronics some subjects from metallurgy even some subjects from civil and then he will earn those required credits let us say 160 or 170 credits by choosing the subjects of his own interest and he then he will become an engineer let i i i presume that there should not be the boundary of branches but there should be integration of branches and this may happen this may happen but with this there are 10 revolutionary approaches it is not that the fixed digit 10 eh? this author has given 10 you can make a list of further few more a need of the our engineering according to the expectations and now our the engineering may change you have just seen the pandemic situation how drastic changes have taken place uh, there is a mushroom growth of uh, learning management systems uh, video conferencing tools and online courses and it is the need of the hour improvise engineering continuous development research is going on and even the engineering is also improvising strip down engineering it is curiosity it is curiosity as a mechanical engineer i should not restrict myself entering into electrical stream i should not restrict myself entering into the computer stream i should also get known to the artificial intelligence the virtual reality augmented reality data mining there should be a stripping down of engineering the curiosity should be there and this is what expected by our engineering students those who will come into the life they they it is expected from them that they sh- they will also know certain things which are not in their purview but they are exposed to those things performance boosting engineering now the sustain sustainability energy efficiency and even economical stability these are the requirements intelligence engineering that is intellectual analysis of systems so that the performance is improvised so that those systems are more friendly to the user cross pollination engineering i have just said that it is interact integration of engineering it is a cross pollination of engineering smart auxiliary engineering sustainable engineering nature inspired engineering uh, now we should we should also correlate with the nature what is happening there and how everyone knows that now uh, the research is going on to uh, generate a uh, proxy screen proxy skin there was a literature i think two days before that already the scientists have uh, they they got success in producing the meat in laboratory now there is there is a possibility that the chicken mutton fish this meat will be laboratory produced and it is nothing but there there it is a debatable issue it is a debatable issue will not go into that debate but will only go with the positive part of this that yes, yes it is possible that we are trying to uh, see the nature and we are trying to take some good things from the nature and we are trying to rebuild those things for example if you have seen the wall a water stagnant water you will find insects they are walking on that water then the the scientists are trying to uh, develop a robo which will not get immersed into the water level but it will walk on the level probably this might have achieved so so these things the nature inspired things are there we are trying to uh, artificially go with photosynthesis we are trying to artificially already uh, the success stories are there artificially generating rain water that is it is nothing but a natural a nature inspired engineering and 
forward looking futuristic engineering what will happen after 5 years uh, always sometimes yesterday also i received a call from solapur the parents were discussing with me and they wanted to take a particular branch because the the parents they were discussing sir atta tala asa ithe scope hai e asa hai tasa hai i said that no don't go with today's scope just try to find out what will be the status of this branch after 5 years when your kid will get graduation what will be the status of this branch after 5 years that you should foresee that you should forecast and thus this will make our engineering students most capable to accept the challenges with this now what is the 21st century engineering is it only engineering in my opinion it is not engineering but it is imagineering you just imagine today and try to engineer it tomorrow why tomorrow you try to imagine today and engineer it today because the tomorrow may be too late these days we find the mobiles they are dying hardly in 3 months you will get new model in 3 months even in 1 month you will get a new model so it is imagining imagine today and engineer today and this is what is expected from the engineers and this is nothing but it is getting our engineers framed qualified trained molded with the concepts not only from their textbook but beyond textbooks there must be some knowledge sharing knowledge imparting knowledge giving everyone knows what are the requirements of washington accord i will not go into more details but in nutshell it is nothing but easing the mobility of professional engineers that is student who does his engineering from india should get an opportunity to study higher education across the borders in any country wherever he want to go and uh, study he should get an opportunity so that is there must be equivalence of the caliber equivalence of the syllabus equivalence of the quality and this washington accord gives us that privilege it upholds the standard of engineering education among engineering bodies globally and there are certain accreditation norms we will not go into those but the in the accord there is a specific word called as graduate attributes so which are those attributes it is nothing but in, in a very simple way we can say that just some of the in very required qualities of the engineer that he should have while performing his duties in the society uh, the engineers role they are classified into three and they called as range or stage and this three stages are first stage is the graduate stage that is the student who comes out as an engineer the second stage is the professional registration that he exercise his duties and perform something it is called as a professional registration there are certain qualities required to get registered as a professional registration and the third stage is international register that is the student should be capable of rendering his services across the borders these three stages are required and for these three stages different attributes are given the washington accord talks about the engineer track the sydney accord talks about the engineering technologist and the dublin accord talks about the engineering technicians for all these three ranges three tracks there are different attributes we will concentrate more on the first two that is the engineering track and the engineering technologist track there are of course limitation of attributes everyone knows that we cannot always consider the two persons equal at all times there are certain deviation points of deviations those deviations are due to demographic financial facility available cultural deviations but considering all these factors are normalized then the only content of syllabus delivered the content of knowledge delivered they are treated as equal across the globe uh, what washington accord recognizes it is the scope and organization of graduate attributes you will find as these are divided into three that is engineers technologists and technicians 
the range information because the engineers they are required to solve the society problems the engineers are expect expected to solve the ongoing natural problems and these problems they can be classified into three range the complex problem the broadly defined problems and the well defined problem the complex problem means that there is no aga picha known there are no boundary conditions are known and haphazardly a city required to find a solution so these are the complex activities and most of the time we come across such type of complex activities that the broadly defined activities that some of the constraints they are defined and even the expected outcome is also partially known to the engineers so we can call them as a broadly defined activities and the well defined activities means yes aga picha is known the inlet conditions are known the boundary conditions are known the situation is known and even we can very well expect what will be come of the analysis so we can call these as well defined activity or well defined problem these activities they are to be analyzed on the basis of few attributes and these attributes are range of resources so what type of resources are available with the engineers level of interactions that the interaction with the resources interaction with the expert available interaction with the manpower available interaction with the guiding factors available interaction with the authority available then innovation what what level of innovation is required in finding out the solution to this complex problem or well defined problem or a broadly defined problem the consequences to society so if i come up with some solution what is the consequences of the society i just explain you one one very small example uh, i i belong to malkapur district buldana and I, on one uh, uh, festival day i was there and uh, suddenly uh, one of our senior member got a knee pain so my elder brother asked me to go to a gadda shop there is a gadda shop and then uh, i i i went there and i asked him my my elder brother told me that just yes, get this three three component from that gadda shop so i brought those three components and my elder brother these, these were crystals these were crystal i know some of you do know these crystals these were the crystals and he just put those crystals in a saucer and he just stirred it to my surprise those crystals they converted into a jelly a sort of solution and he applied that solution to the to his uh, uh, knee and after few minutes uh, my that senior person my uncle said that okay bara zara chan vatta zara bara vatta i was surprised what it is then i just googled i i researched and i come across these three crystals <coughs> then one fine day what i did i just took these crystals made them mix got that solution and then i put a wick into that solution and it enlightened that wick to my surprise that wick burned with more power more light more intensity then i thought that can i do this and add it to to a fuel so i did that experiment i added that content into fuel and i found that the calorific value has increased if you search with my name you will find that paper it is already there paper is published so the calorific value was increased i was really very pleased that yes this can lead to increase in calorific value then i added this to gauri uh, the cow dung gauri and then determine the calorific value there was increase in calorific value but at the same time when i took these fumes the exhaust gases and did some sort of few gas analysis to my surprise it found that there was some increase in toxicity so ultimately though there is increase in calorific value though there is increase in performance but the the consequence of this attempt on society is not good so of course while getting the solution as an engineer i must always concentrate on the impact of whatever results i am getting those impacts on society are more in, critical the impact on society as well as the impact on environment and then familiarity 
how that solution can become a familiar to all just you will know that how the video conferencing has become familiar to all not only the technicians not only the faculty but even i have seen my brother my younger brother cousin who is working as a med he, he is in a medical field a pharmacy field he is zonal manager i i just seen that his medical representatives also use this video conferencing with the doctors they now do not visit the hospitals for calls but they make video call i have seen the grocery shop owner video conferencing with his supplier so now this has brought down this has come down to the lower most sector of the society and thus now this solution is becoming familiar and familiar the use of mobile it is becoming familiar and familiar just imagine in the month of february in the all institutions whether it is a higher institution or a primary institution the mobiles were banned mobiles were not allowed to be used in the institution there was a advocacy that the mobile shouldn't reach to the students the kids what is the situation today the situation is that in everyone's hand there is a mobile even the junior kg student attending mobile and attending online classes the the solution has become familiar i will not go into the consequences but the my intention is that it is our responsibility as engineer to find out the solution which is familiar to the to the society now it is the next is a professional competency as an engineer we should have the professional competency which is a professionally or occupationally competent person has the attributes necessary to perform the activities within the profession or occupation to the standards expected in the independent employment or practice that my output should be a standard what is expected i should reach to those standards and again on the similar range there are certain competency attributes professional attributes in the categories of engineers technologists and technicians there are 13 different elements and now with this we also know that there are graduate attributes given by the accord i will only list those attributes and then we will find out that how the attributes are required to be fulfilled and what is expected the graduate attributes are the set of generic knowledge skills and attitudes considered essential for all graduate engineers of the 21st century it is means that these are classified into a sector of knowledge that is basic knowledge is required the engineer should also have a skill and not only the skill the attitude remember the aptitude yes it is with everyone the aptitude maybe little bit different if we have two students of equal aptitude equal aptitude but you will find that they do not perform in the same manner because there is a difference of attitude attitude matters a lot all graduate engineers are expected to demonstrate these attributes on completion of their degrees this is expectation may not be satisfied so when there some of the people they advocate these attributes of course there is the other side of the coin that there are some people who are against these attributes and they say that okay how it is possible that all engineers will come with the same quality we will with the the same attitude will exercise the same forms no it is not possible it is true but this is the expectation that all engineers which are coming from an education institution they should demonstrate these attributes after completion of their degrees the institutions who can ensure these attributes in their fresh graduates may be accredited this is the norms these are the code of conduct that these are to be accredited yesterday only you must have read that Uh, the madras high court has given a judgment that uh, the universities have the right to improve the bench, benchmark of expectations the iict has given some minimum benchmark of accreditation 
minimum benchmark for quality so it is it is expected that there is no relaxation as far as those benchmarks are concerned but yes the university the institution autonomous institutions and those they have that right to improve this benchmark to raise this benchmark as far as quality is concerned and it is really a good judgment that in such cases the institutions will become more what we can say uh, concentrating their efforts on improving the quality of the students lastly it provides the means for establishing substantial equivalence of the degrees uh, these are the classification of uh, these qualities the first is way of thinking way of working skills for living in the world and tools for working the engineer should have all these tools with him आपण असं म्हणतो ना मराठीमध्ये आय होप मोस्ट ऑफ यू अंडरस्टँड मराठी आय एम सॉरी इफ सम ऑफ देम आर नॉन मराठीज आय विल यूज हिंदी या सम लोक जाते है की असे कहा जाता है की हम लोग जब किसी वॉर पे जाते है किसी लढाई के लिए जाते है तो अपने साथ में जो भाता होता ना जिसमे हम लोग सारे टूल्स रखते है वो सारे के सारे टूल्स लेके जाना चाहिए पता नाही कोणसा कब लग जायगा इन द सेम वे दीज आर द टूल्स द वेपन्स दॅट द इंजिनियर शुड हॅव these are some of the attributes i will go very fast through these attributes because these are mostly known to all this apply knowledge of mathematics science engineering fundamentals it is essential for all engineers identify formulate and research literature and solve complex engineering problem of course this complex has all those three ranges that is complex broadly defined and well defined design solution for complex engineering problems and design systems not only give the solution or not only go for analysis but just yes, we that analysis that research must be made available to the society community in form of a some usable workable model conduct investigations of complex problem the existing systems problems they must be investigated to improve its performance create select and apply appropriate techniques resources and modern engineering tools function effectively as an individual as an individual a society member not as a machine when we say that individual yes the individual has some emotions so those emotions must be exhibited when we work as an engineer and that is why it is said that while building a building while building a building the civil engineer must understand that the human beings live in the building so accordingly it must be designed when i design a some sort of system i must always understand that it is used by human beings so it must be safe enough communicate effectively the communication skills must be there demonstrate understanding of the societal health safety and legal cultural issues understand and commit the professional ethics not only the human values and that is why you must have seen that now it has become mandatory for all students to undergo the refreshing course in universal human values as well as the refreshing that is universal human values 1 and universal human values 2 universal human values 1 in the first year and universal human values 2 in the second year it is now mandatory that all our students should understand those universal human values the sympathy empathy honesty that must be known and they should have that humanity touch to all whatever a person as a person exercise that must be governed by these human values understand the impact of engineering solutions in the societal context and demonstrate knowledge and all need for sustainable development demonstrate a knowledge and understanding of management and business practices i think uh, yesterday everyone has Uh, attended dipika madam session and during her session she was repeatedly hammering i i liked her session a lot she was repeatedly hammering that along with engineering the management education is important she was hammering along with engineering the management education is important and yes i do accept i do accept i have done dbm and i have done mba 
so while doing while exercising my work i always at back of mind i recall those principles which i have learned there and as a successful engineer yes we must go we must have exposure not only exposure but some sort of expertise also proficiency also in exercising the managing management principle and i will suggest that the management subject must be made mandatory a compulsory subject a course for all engineers when i i learned my engineering we had a course as industrial management a production management industrial management as a compulsory course but i have seen some of the syllabus syllabi of some of the institutions where this course is not mandatory it is elective it is elective means we are asking some of the students to go with management some of the students not to go with management but yes management is really important the ability to engage in independent and lifelong learning independent not under the peer pressure not under the society pressure but it should be for my own development and for society development a lifelong learning one should be very much interested in understanding and learning whatever is not known to him or her and with this these are the attributes which are expected that the engineer should know the should have the should all this should be with the engineer when he comes out there are certain professional competency profiles i will go very fast with this uh, these are the the there are differentiating characteristics that how the attributes and the proficiency there can be a match there can be interaction but some of the time you will find that these are little bit separated and these differentiating characteristics are also there that a comprehend and apply understand knowledge so if we, if one is going to as a professional engineer that is just coming out from the graduation now registering himself as a engineer technologist that is doing something rendering services and lastly doing hands on so with this there is a sort of differentiation that a comprehend and apply universal knowledge so according to our requirement we should be able to know the fundamentals and apply that knowledge to that task for example if i am working as an engineer in the refrigeration system then yes i am i must know the fundamentals of refrigeration i must know the fundamentals of heat transfer i must know the fundamentals of heat exchanger design i must know the fundamentals of thermodynamics and those should be also i am i must be in a position to use it with a good practice the second is it is a basic knowledge and it is a local knowledge a local knowledge that i must know the local knowledge what is there what are the resources available how the workforce is there what are what is the social the social status of that workforce and how i will be using that workforce how i will be using the locally available material in finding out the solution so that is must for all these three then the problem analysis the complexity analysis i must be well conversant with the tools those are to be used for complex analysis because i will require to define investigate and analyze i will require to identify clarify and analyze and i will also require to use it then the design and development of solutions it is evaluation the type of activity once the solution is found out it is to be evaluated whether it is feasible or not feasible i always ask my students whenever we go with the project i ask to uh, my students to just check the feasibility the feasibility of the solution and in my opinion the feasibility of the solution should be checked with three principles the first principle is to check the conceptual feasibility conceptual feasibility whether this the concept that i am pro proposing whether it is feasible or not for example now i am sitting in my house or uh, in chair and i i wish to go to the moon so i said that okay i will i will apply some force i will place a spring there under my chair and it will have a lever so that spring will be just said that and as soon as i operate the lever my chair will get 
pushed out and I will reach to the moon. It's a very funny concept. A very funny concept. It is not at all conceptually validating. So I should not go with this. The viability should be conceptual viability. Then, then it should be, of course, when I will test this, I should also remember that my concept must be validated with the all thermodynamic laws, first law, second law, third law. It must validate. Then next is the manufacturability. What I am proposing, whether it is manufacturable, whether it can be brought into existence using the available manufacturing processes with me, using the available systems with me, using the known processes with me, whether it is manufacturable or not. And lastly, the commercial viability. Whatever solution I am proposing, whether it is commercially viable or not, whether that can be sold or not, whether the end user is in position to purchase it and use it or not. So these three viability conditions must be satisfied. That is nothing but a sort of evaluation that we should go with evaluation that is what is the outcome and what are the its impact on the society. The protection of society, the legal and uh, regularity, whether I am the, the solution that I am giving, whether it is acceptable in the local laws or not, whether it is acceptable or not, that I must check. And means this highlights that my engineer should also know the rules and regulations. And that is why you will see that in some of the institutions, the universities, there is a course called as industrial, industrial uh, legislation and regulations industrial laws and industrial regulations. So these are, these must be known to my engineers. <laughs> the ethics and how to manage the engineering activities. The communication and lastly the lifelong learning. So these are the professional attributes. The judgment, the responsibility for decision. When I I propose some decision. When I propose some solution, then I must be responsible for the consequences of that solution. Now, पर हम लोग देखते हैं बहुत बार ऐसे होता है. आप लोगों ने सभी ने देखा होगा कि when I go to a CT scan, I get the CT scan, I get the report, and and at the bottom of the report there is a line. The line states that the person who has done that CT scan. The person who has written that report, he doesn't take the responsibility of correctness of that report. Uh, he says that this is generated using some sort of machines and that machine is responsible. When we go to pathology lab, if you ask for a recommendation or report, the pathology lab will only give you the quantified values that, okay, AHB itna hai. Sugar itna hai, urine me itna hai. But very few pathologists they will write some inferences. And when they write the inferences, there is again a small line. That the small line states that they are not responsible. They will ask us to visit the physician, show the reports to the physician, and the responsibility will lie with the physician. Even if you see some of the products, if you read the brochure. In the brochure also, you will find that some of the responsibilities are not taken by the manufacturer. But as an engineer, when we propose certain solution, it is our, our loyal responsibility to adhere to the decisions. We should take that responsibility. Now going to the next part. Everyone knows the Bohm's taxonomy and it is related with the learning levels to achieve these attributes. And there are the levels are one is remembering level, which highlights recalling from the memory of the provisionally learned material, understanding, explaining the ideas and concepts, applying using the information in another familiar situation. Now, my dear friends, you will find that the lower two levels, these are very well can be achieved by reading certain content 
text contents from the books but when it is to be applied there is a requirement of hands on unless and until we do certain things we will not be able to find out whether it is applicable or not analyze when we want to check the performance of a system unless and until we do certain things we do experiments we operate them we handle them it is not possible to analyze evaluate justify the decision a course of action when it is to be evaluated again it requires a handling of the system it requires a hands on and ultimately creating when i go for some analysis a conceptual design is made then the final design is made the product drawing is made the parts are made now they are required to assemble they are required to assemble they are required to create and and it is required to see how the creation is there a new product is to be developed new product is to be offered so now you will see that from applying to creating it requires an engineer a hands on to play with the system and now it is our responsibility being the change agent the institutions are the change agent the teachers are the change agent it is our responsibility as a change agent to offer our students the surrounding the platform the atmosphere the facilities using which he will get this hands on and that is why it is necessary to advocate to advocate the project based learning we want our students to exercise to want our students to practice the hands on there are certain assessment methods as we have seen that remembering understanding applying in some cases even applying also can be gone with the conventional part of uh, pen and pen examination that is fixed our examination pen and pen examination but when we go with part of analyzing evaluating creating the pen and pen examination is not the only solution to this but there has to be some course projects mini projects minor projects some capstan projects must be there the students must be given an opportunity to do on their own and this is the need of time the students nowadays they must be advocated to go for project based learning i think in some uh, in some of the lecture i do not remember the expert's name but he has definitely said that in our age in our days we used to have a subject karyanubhav work experience i still remember i i got my uh, high school teaching from municipal high school malkapur district buldana and we we used to have a work experience period uh, i still remember the name of teacher navre sir navre sir and he used to teach us carpentry it was compulsory for all students to go for a karyanubhav and there we we played with the tools we played with wood we we got an experience of using a planner we we use a saw we cut the pieces we made joints and that experience has given us a different knowledge level nowadays there is still a karyanubhav is there when my kid went to his school there was a karyanubhav subject and on one fine day i was called in the convent i i will not name that convent it was not from pune i was called in the convent and the principal told me that your son is lagging in karyanubhav he has not completed the task i said yes he has not completed the task the principal said then why didn't you so he asked me question ki kyun aapne kyun nahi kiya bacche ka kaam aapne karna chahiye tha or you have to follow that deadline so you should have you should have made that project and ask your kid to carry it to the institution i said yadi mai karunga project to fir wo kab sikhega this is what is happening nowadays our students should do on their own 
there must be assistance but that assistance should be just to solve their problems the assistance should not be in doing the things the things must be done by them themselves now these are some of the range of problem solving techniques that we use the attributes of the depth of knowledge is required when i try to go and doing my own i must have the depth of knowledge required with all pros and cons how to use it and how to how not to use it range of conflicting requirements a particular for example if i use a tool let us say the soldering gun everyone has used this soldering gun and when i put the soldering gun after some time the tip gets heated and then i can go and use it soldering gun i must know what are the conflicting issues there where to put it and where not to put it when to hold it and when not to hold it how to identify whether it is heated or not heated the depth of analysis required what what exactly should be done with this problem oh marathi ye kahawat hai na marathi mein aag someshwari bamba rameshwari means the problem is at some place and we are trying to apply solution to some place so that that analysis that depth is required the familiarity of issue is required extent of applicable course which code i must use even i am going for a design of some heat exchanger then i must know which code i should use i should use asme code or i should use tema code and what are the differences between this asme code and tema code so that code i must know i must know when i am trying to uh, provide some uh, solution to the effluent system i must know the rules and regulations of the uh, locality so those codes i must know extent of stakeholders involvement and conflict requirements the stakeholders that is the society the administration the politics all the stakeholders the customers their interest i must know the interdependence of all these stakeholders and the requirements the consequences and lastly the judgment that is the solution which i have provided whether it is workable or not whether i am satisfied with my solution or not just remember the own satisfaction is the first key to success you must have seen that a murti wala jab murti banata hai to murti banane ke baad wo pehle khud murti ki taraf dekhta hai aur jab wo satisfy hota hai tab jaake usko stack mein lagata hai यदि वो सेटिस्फाई नहीं होता है खुद तो उसको बाजू में निकाल के रख देता है सेम इज द केस विथ ऑल क्रिएटर्स विथ ऑल क्रिएटर्स दैट आई शुड बी ओन क्रिटिक आई शुड बी ओन क्रिटिक आई शुड गो थ्रू ऑल प्रोज एंड कॉन्स आई शुड चेक इट ऑन ऑल पैरामीटर्स एंड वेन आई एम सेटिस्फाइड देन इट मस्ट बी ऑफर टू द सोसाइटी विद दिस इट इज नेसेसरी नाउ to emphasize that for achieving those levels to achieving those levels which are those levels it is i will go to those levels again that is what analyzing evaluating and creating for this three levels it is necessary to go for a project based learning it is necessary to go for a project based learning now let us go to the project based learning what exactly the project based learning is and now my dear friends we are going into the era where this project based learning will rule our institutions we are bound to offer this project learning based learning systems to our students i think uh, when i was in uh, one of the polytechnic institutions in vidarbha i i still remember in 1985 unfortunately i have not visited now that institute uh, while coming after coming to pune but in 1986 i think i have visited mahatma gandhi vidyalay uruli kanchan mahatma gandhi vidyalay uruli kanchan <laughs> and that time i found that the institute has all 
the trades all all trades were there carpentry masonry painting and those students they were required to work in these trades the school building was constructed by the students those were having that masonry trade they constructed a part of that building the furniture was made by the students and that school was a high school school i think till 10th was there so mean the students when they were studying in 5th 6th 7th 8th 9th 10th they were offered these services they were offered these trades the skills were developed so definitely they will become a creator please remember uh, when we talk when we discuss with the parents uh, when i ask the parents i i say tumta mulga he asa he kai workshop madla kaam karat nahi so one of parent told me sir pan mala tela engineer karaycha na mala tela carpenter nahi karaycha na he said that i want to make him engineer not a carpenter i said who who has told you that carpenter is not a engineer yes he is engineer or you are your your kid should also know what carpentry is what are those tools how those tools are used your kid should know what is smithy you should your kid should know what is the sheet metal working your kid should know what is turning your kid should know what is machinist he should get that hands on the expertise must be there <laughs> and now it is the era that we are going into the project based learning it will be ruling all the institutions in western countries if you google it if you google it while preparing for this course i have googled and i was surprised to know that most of the foreign institutions the schools they use this project based learning of course as our population is very 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 big uh, we face a very critical problem was as a student and faculty ratio where this, there is ratio of 1 is to 10 or 1 is to 15 in our cases the ratio is 1 is to 50 sometimes so in, in such cases it is very difficult for us to go for project based learning but still we must try we must try those institutions they have divided their curriculum in terms of percentage that nearly 40 to 50% curriculum it is start using project based learning and remaining curriculum is start with a conventional method we should think whether it is possible in engineering or not whether we can develop our syllabus or if we cannot develop our syllabus just can we add some content to first year second year third year and final year can we add some more hands on experience by removing all study experiment from the syllabus if you open any lab course you will find that the first is study of steam nozzle then study of impulse and reaction turbine study of steam condensers so there is a only study it is knowledge based there is no hands on but can we add certain contents to the syllabus and remove this study experiments and go with some hands on <coughs> this thought must be given the project based learning is an instructional methodology encouraging students to learn by applying knowledge and skills through an engaging experience the students will get engaged themselves they will learn by doing some mistakes they will learn by doing some new things they will learn by receiving certain new experiences it is nothing but engaging experience it is designed to address real world problems and issues and to investigate and analyze their complexities interconnection and ambiguities so this is what expected from the 
problem based learning uh, sometimes it is also called as project based learning or problem based learning that is it is expected that a problem is given to the student and they are asked to find out the solution to that problem it is not only the finding of solution it is also building some solution building some solution or analyzing and getting inferences now for example if i ask my students uh, how it can be it is a project based learning how it can be if i i ask my first year students i know that after one year some of them will are going to mechanical some of them are going to electrical i ask those students and i and we i i arrange a visit to a a science museum a techno park a technology park i i arrange a visit to technology park and i ask my students to list down all those models they visit they see and now make them to find out the working principle of that model this is a task given the first task that is to understand to know the working principle of that model and the second task second task is that try to make a replica of that model using the resources that you are having so if a list of those models are made the students will go and go through each and every model they will note down they will try to refer the books they will find out the working principles they will get additional knowledge and then definitely they will come up with such similar type of uh, setup so they will get the head on hands on there are the advocacy of project based learning yes it is really important to go with this project based learning the project based learning gives students a more integrated understanding of the concepts and knowledge they learn while also equipping them with practical skills they can apply throughout their lives uh, i will try like to quote one example here i joined college of engineering pune in 2003 <laughs> before that i worked with industry then i joined iti as principal i was there as a first four years i was vice principal and second four year i was principal and i had an opportunity to really that that experience gave me a lot i had an opportunity to simultaneously remember simultaneously head four institutions i was heading simultaneously four institutions i was principal iti rajura i was principal iti korpana i was principal iti gondpimpri and i was headmaster technical institution rajura so simultaneously i was holding four charges and i was working parallelly with all these four institutions that experience gave me a lot then i joined polytechnic and i and afterwards i joined coep i think in 2006 the two students they approach me one was david but and second was infan mulla these two students approach me and they said sir am i like project karaycha hai tumcha kade so please you will you please guide us i just saw them and i i saw that those students they are really good students as far as their eyes are concerned i found deep confidence in their eyes i said okay we will go with this then they said sir tumhi check problem sanga i said why you know sir tumhi check kai the problem sanga i asked them to search and we search a problem we made a very crude experiment with the heating of water i asked them to take 1 liter of water with a very one simple utensil i asked them to put that 1 liter of water in the utensil and i asked them to boil it and i said that yes okay just find out what is the time required for boiling and then i asked did you notice something on your gas stove they said no i said that okay then go and see that there is a, a flow given for small burner and large burner there is a flow rate given mass flow rate is given and even if you find you can find out what is the calorific value of lpg so using this calorific value just find out what is the efficiency of your gas stove and the next day they came and they said sir the efficiency of gas stove is 35% so i said what is 35% yes sir they said yes sir it is 35% then 
then i ask them to find out what is the permissible what is the efficiency of gas to as claim so they referred the indian standards and they found and we found that it is 62% i said that means there is a gap of 35 to 60 62% so there is a nearly gap of 27% you can improve this efficiency by 27% at least you can reach to this so they accepted that challenge proudly and i think i it is mentioned that i have got the project a fourth marshal best project award it is for that <coughs> they accepted that challenge and then they learned a lot things and we come up with a swirling flame burner which will increase the combustion efficiency we have also suggested what should be the uh, critical height of the utensil from the uh, flame we also suggested the the design for the uh, support system and that got the power, that got the award but the main story is after this david bhat and irfan mulla they learned a combustion a lot they got interest develop and then they completed they completed their masters in the combustion from iit madras their project was converted as a phd project with the same guide with the same institution irfan mullah then completed his postdoc in combustion and really i am proud to say that now he has joined iisc bangalore as a faculty in combustion this learning which started from their btech project converted into a career the same thing can happen with all students with all students student not only acquire important knowledge and skills they also learn how to research complex issues solve problems develop plans manage time organize their work collaborate with others and persevere and overcome challenges it can improve student engagement in school uh, it is the time it is now a problem of attendance uh, we have to do lot many things there is a credit marks for attendance there is a punishment for attendance you will be detained and what not but if this type of activities are there then you will definitely find that the student engagement is increased they will attend the schools they will attend the colleges they will attend the institutions and it will increase their interest in teaching learning process even not only the student teaching learning process it will also increase the interest of teachers in delivering the contents since project based learning represents a more flexible approach to instruction it allows teachers to tailor assignments and projects for students it is very difficult to frame a problem so teachers will require to take more efforts in designing a problem for the students so it will be a good learning experience for teachers also to tailor assignments and projects for students with diverse variety of variety of interest career aspirations learning styles abilities and personal backgrounds i will also give you one example Uh, you can also uh, search this content he is a prashik kharse he is prashik kharse and uh, i think in 2007 or 8 i offered a project of development of a virtual steam laboratory virtual thermodynamics labor to the students and these were three students rahul kamle prashik kharse and anjali patil these three students they take up this challenge and then they develop a lab view based steam laboratory a thermodynamics laboratory which was then uploaded on the national instrument uh, portal also i think it is still there but what is the outcome of this the prashik kharse that student has learned lab view thoroughly and after doing his graduation he started his venture of framing and establishing virtual laboratories for schools he went into that business he accepted that business 
and this is the success story of such type of project based learning there are n number of such case studies even from your institutions also that a particular project if properly taken into account the students are motivated they can convert their project into a profession and yes nowadays we are working with a small group hardly one or two or three groups but our intention is to make a larger group aware of this and get benefited the project based learning allows teachers and students to address multiple learning standards simultaneously because it is an integration i cannot only concentrate on mechanical engineering definitely i will have to go to some other parts that is metallurgy for example the manufacturing electrical i cannot go i can only i cannot stick up with mechanical i mean mechanical i mean mechanical no 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 i will have to go with interdisciplinary simultaneously parallel i rem i recall i i learned one article and wherein the executive said that they are interested in having 80 engineers t executives he highlighted t he said that we are interested in hiring t executives i was surprised what is this t executive and they elaborated the team is it is english alphabet t a horizontal line and a vertical line the vertical line mean domain depth we want engineer with his domain depth and at the same time we have a horizontal bar that is the equal knowledge content expertise in the allied disciplines also it is nothing but the integration of disciplines the industry want t experts t engineers having a vertical in depth knowledge of their domain at the same time the horizontal expansion of allied branches allied domain let it be even biology let it be human sciences let it be botany whatever it is but our engineer should be definitely exposed oriented towards such type of allied information also and this is the advantage of project based learning of course with this always there are two sides of a coin so when we see the good sign of a coin definite there has to be a bad sign of a coin and the intention will be definitely to minimize all these critics all remove this negative part but there are certain negative parts as per as project based learning is concerned the project based learning may not ensure that the student learn all the required material and standards they are expected to learn in a course subject area or program level for example if i teach a subject heat transfer and there is conduction convection radiation uh, then uh, um, uh, heat exchanger but if a project is given to a student he may not require anything dealing with the heat exchanger design <laughs> he may not come across any sort of convection or he may not come across some sort of advancements so there is a sort of that he may not get oriented to these contents but if it is a conventional classroom teacher the faculty is required to teach that content to the student as a completion of syllabus so this is a this is a possibility that the student may not get the in depth and all knowledge many teachers will not have the time or specialized training required to use project based learning effectively and this is really concern that you will find that the very old faculty they are little bit reluctant i may not this is not a general statement it is not only to criticize but it is sometime it happens that they may not have the facility they may not have the inclination they may not have the proper training so how to frame a question how to uh, offer the topic and what requirement will be there so if we want to implement this then the change agent must be trained first i will definitely support the idea of training the teachers for implementing the project based learning the third is institution may not have funding resources and capacity this is really concern when we go with the project based learning it will require n number of tools machinery raw material 
and of course space the hobby centers the project rooms and we are now facing shortage of space so yes these are some of the very critical important issues the project that students select and design may vary widely in academic rigor and quality that that the student may not at all go into the concerned academics and it may totally get deviated from his academic for example the mechanical engineer is doing some project with a biology anatomic that is for developing a knee joint then then the student will not come across any mechanical part but he will go into anatomy so that may be deviating from his fundamental knowledge so the mentor the mentor the coach it will be the responsibility of the mentor to see what best can be done the project based learning could open the door to water down learning expectation it will be little bit leaning down it will be little bit lowering down the quality of course work not the quality of the work but it is the quality of course work that is to be imparted that is to be offered to the student the project based learning is not well suited to students who lack self motivation for doing the things with your hand we want self motivation even in our institution now nowadays with all institutions there are different clubs in my institution there are 45 clubs starting from philosophy to satellite and from cultural to ase club so in most of the institution they do have such type of uh, student centered club but we will find that if there are 700 students not all students are engaged with all clubs different clubs but there are at least 10 15 students they are not part or member of any club but they enjoy the academics so they do not have that sort of interest the self motivation is not there so they are to be motivated such type of students like the structured learning environment they do not find comfortable in the this unstructured learning environment so the institution the mentor they are required to do a lot to support such type of students and to take them into the stream the project based learning raises a variety of logical concerns since students are more likely to learn outside of school this may happen this may happen that the student will do most of the work outside the school now for example if a project is given with agriculture the student will work on the farm and he will keep himself away from the institution or in unsupervised setting there is it is very difficult for a teacher to go every time and see the what student is doing because there is a group of students with the faculty or work with the untrained educator on the farm the supervised supervisor may not be trained educator so this is possible that while doing certain things there may be some other bad things coming to the student bad thing in the sense not in the value system but what is not expected by the student or by the course work the student may learn those things or the, the, the which is expected to be learned may not be learned by the student so these are some of the pros and cons of the uh, project based learning but whatever cons are there whatever adverse remarks are there but i will personally advocate that there must be project learn project based learning in the institutions now we will see uh, when are we we are expected to take the break hello hello sir okay hello hello uh, when we are expected yes, to take the break uh, sir we can take break now no problem so kiti 10 minutes ha of 5 to 10 minutes okay okay thank you so now we will yes. take a break for 10 minutes and now it is uh, 
10:35. So we'll yes. at 10:45. Will it be okay? Yes, sir. yes, sir. no problem. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. So for the all the participants, I would like to announce the break of uh, 10 minutes. So we'll be starting our next session uh, in the uh, on the 10:45. Thank you.
Hello all. Am I audible to all? Yes, sir. I am. Uh, okay, sir. So I would like to request Dr. Dhaman Gaukar, sir, uh, to kindly uh, start the next session. Did I start my video? Uh, yes, sir. your video is on. Okay, but I will keep video off. It will save bandwidth. Okay, sir, no problem. Now, uh, coming back to our discussion, we have seen certain pros and cons of uh, project-based learning. But I will personally advocate project-based learning. Yes, we are required to develop certain facilities, infrastructure, then attitude, the aptitude of faculty as well as students, then funding. But the industry institute interaction will definitely help in this context. So if we uh, collaborate, coordinate, and integrate with the industry, then the project-based learning can be easy task. Of course, I do know that 100% will not be possible, but some of the courses, they can be definitely, they can be definitely brought under this uh, umbrella. How to, how to go with the project-based learning? There are few steps. Of course, these are not the only steps these are not the guidelines. These are how it can be obtained. Even when we offer some project to our students, if you find that project report, the development of project report, the development of uh, the analysis, it is nothing but a sort of project-based learning. On the similar grounds, it will also go. The student being introduced to a set of user-defined performance requirements. When I offer a a project-based learning problem. At the first part, I should ask my students, tell my students what I expect from them. Whether that work is to be handled by individuals, whether the work is to be handled by the group, whether the contribution should be from all or for a person, what expected outcome is there, which content the student will require, what precautions they should take, what they should do and what not. This, this must be first hand, the student must be made well aware of these guiding conditions. A clear and concise design objective statement is formulated. And this is very necessary in most of the cases. We find that if the hypothesis is vague, then the, the solution development is also not proper. It will not go in the right direction. The hypothesis should not be vague. It should be in such a way that from the hypothesis, we should be able to frame certain objectives. It should be such that from those frames, certain objectives, we should be able to develop certain methodologies. So a framing a problem statement, a concise a problem statement, objective oriented problem statement is a must. And it is the skill of a teacher. It is the skill of mentor. It is the skill of coach. And here it is possible that the training is required. A list of functional requirements, what the design must do is derived. And these functional requirements must, for this, it is not necessary that the students will do this functional requirement. It is that the students will be asked to list down these functional requirements. So it will be an exercise for the students to come forward with the functional requirements. A potential conceptual design solution 
is to be developed it is not that there will be only one solution <coughs> there can be different solutions for example in my case when we when we went with the uh, domestic lpg stove project there were five different solutions given by the students and at the end we analyze all those solutions let me very clearly state that those days we were not knowing the computational fluid dynamics i was not at all aware of cfd so the simulation part was not with us so we were required to get the prototype of all those five solutions so we prepared we got those five burners fabricated we used those five burners on the lpg stove and conducted the experiment so this options available they were critically analyzed but this was post manufacturing in some cases it is not at all recommended as we are now having some tools with us we can go with simulation a virtual virtual model can be done and it can be tested but the potential conceptual design solutions they must be tested and then from that conceptual design a feasible solution is to be selected that feasible solution is then used for further analysis and bringing down into a form of commodity a potential design solution are analyzed from a system level perspective which explores the interrelationship of components including how they interact with each other and their operating environments this can be done at the laboratory level this can be done on the field but it is necessary or sometimes you must have seen that the trial products are given to the uh, users in demo they call it as demo the purpose of offering demo is just to get the feedback from the user whether their product is acceptable or not once the users do it they they get acquainted with it they get used to that product then on the basis of their feedback system the remarks if it requires some modifications they are done and then the product is offered to the user for final use the same thing can be used in the project based learning the solution is to be analyzed it should be tried the interrelationship of the components must be discussed tested and then it is to be offered a detailed design solution is developed and specifications are established to enable the design to be fabricated and then final testing is done a prototype of the design solution is built and tested to validate if it meet the original performance requirement now we have seen what are the constraint there and what are the expected outcome if i am suggesting a machine which is expected to give a performance of 52% then definitely at the end my performance should be somewhere nearer to the 52% so that i will check and then it will be offered a project plan is usually developed to guide students to the process a perfect project plan that how we are trying to advance it may be a daily it may be weekly it may be monthly but the total project plan is to be decided that is for 6 months we will be doing this project and in the first work it is expected to complete this task the students should keep that log and they should get themselves checked whether they are following the pre decided project plan or not it is required it is must 
Now, how to implement the project-based learning? The first is challenge the students. I, I have in specific used this word challenge. It is not to only suggest. It is not to only ask. But it is to challenge the students to learn to work in teams. And really, if you if you see the bulk of students, you will find that some of the students, they like to work independently. Uh, in my case, I, I, I get most some students and they approach me and say that, sir, I want to do a project. I always ask a question, who is your project mate? Who is your partner? Who is the group members? If the students say that, no, sir, I'm doing, I'm going to do the project my own. I said, no. At least you should bring one more student with you and you try to do this project as a team. <coughs> I, I will not advocate to work the project independently. It is not discouraging the student. It is just to increasing and asking him to work with other as a team. It is always better to work as a team. To practice system level thinking. It is always a system level thinking. If you, we are all engineers, we know that the system level thinking is what? First box is input. The second box is process. The third box is output. And the fourth box is feedback. So when the student work in a system level thinking, he should concentrate what are my input conditions? What are the resources available with me? The qualitative part of the resources, quantitative part of the resources that I must know. Then I must know how to use these resources in a particular process. The process box will decide the different processes that I will require to use. Again, the quality of that process is there. At the end, I must anticipate what is the outcome as a process, how to decide its quality, how to decide its performance. And then finally, the feedback. That is, are some improvements required? Did I make some mistake which is to be checked, which is, which is to be nullified, which is to be rectified? So this feedback must be there. And challenge the integrating technologies. We must ask students to use different technologies available today. Not only one technology, but there must be integration of technologies. Just check whether we can go for a computer interface. Ask the student, just check whether you can use some sort of remote sensing, <coughs> remote control. Just check whether you can use the mobile as a communication tool and get your uh, systems controlled from some other place. So it is sort of integration of technologies to get the desired results. Of course, the quality results. The second is challenge the students to recognize that their design must solve technical problem. The purpose of doing the work is to get a solution to some problem. This must be the intention to analyze, to research, to invent, to innovate, to discover, etc., etc. But this must be with an intention to solve a problem. And even nowadays, the industry also, when they hire, they when they hire, they try to get the problem solver. They want the students with this multidimensional attitude and aptitude that a problem solver, they do not want a harkamya. They do not want Marathi, again, there is a term sang patla kailun daut lekni uh, in, in my, I, I belong to Vidarva. So you read, we use this uh, uh, proverb that sang patla kailu and daut lekni kudetyo. Means I will only follow your orders. I will only follow your orders. Blindly follow. I will not use my mind brain. 
to see the consequences of whatever orders are given i will only follow this attitude is not required now the industry want a person who will give some solutions to their problem a problem solver even when industry come to institute and offer a consultancy you will find that they always come with a problem and they ask us to give some solution to the problem so this attitude and ability must be improved intentionally it must be given to the students that they should solve the technical problem and with the intention to make a contribution to the society some some addition must be there whatever is existing it must be modified it must be improvised our contribution to the society must be in the interest of society not against the interest of society now this can be also contribution to the society but it is against the society i should improve the living living standard of the society i should offer some ease to the society and this concept this concept is referred as a dual tetrahedron approach where the two tetrahedrons are placed in a reverse mesh fashion such that they rest on the apex of the tetrahedron a one tetrahedron deals with the society expectations that is to solve the society problem to get the problem solving with a very economical solution and another tetrahedron deals with the environmental issues societal issues uh, sorry this is reputation you will see that this is the expectation that it should be a solving the technical problems as well as with a contribution to the society such that the economic and technical issues they are balanced this is the expectation now the key elements of the project based learning establish team dynamics and the role of the instructor the first part once we decide a sort of problem it is necessary to select a proper team selecting a proper team needs understanding the problem thoroughly selecting a proper team needs knowing what is required by the problem what solution will be obtained which are the qualities are required to deal the problem that is the attributes of the person working whether the problem needs a person good in the design whether the problem needs a person good in the simulation whether a problem needs a person good in the manufacturing that is hands on whether the problem needs a person good in communication skill because the presentation is required so depending on the requirements of the problem as an instructor as a mentor the teacher should chalk down those requirements and appropriately select the team here the role of instructor must be very specifically finalized the instructor is a facilitator the instructor is a supporter the instructor is a coach the instructor is a mentor the culture must be developed that the student will have a faith in the instructor the student will have a freedom to interact with the instructor there should not be a, a line organization as far as instructor and student relationship is concerned in case of project based learning there should not be a line organization in the line organization there is always movement of the orders from top to bottom 
that whatever instructor will ask to do, the students will do. No, this should not happen. There must be a tendency of allowing the students to explore different things. They should be allowed to play. And the instructor will only facilitate, instructor will only see, observe. And whenever he finds, he will introduce into the system. There should not be an authority play by the student. It is not an authority, a power play. It, there should be a friendly contribution. And this role of the instructor must be defined well in advance. A clearly identify the design problem and make sure students develop enough background knowledge to understand the application. <laughs> When we describe the requirements of the problem, the instructor will definitely ask the students to do some homework, what is required by the problem. For example, whether the students, for, let us go, the, we, we always come across certain projects. Again, I am taking you to the same issue of burner. So I have asked my students to learn a lot about the combustion to see how the domestic LPG burner is designed, how the LPG stove is designed, how the combustion takes place, how the performance of this LPG stove is checked, what are the BSI standards required. So this fundamental knowledge is required. The instructor should ask those students to learn these things and to make them equipped to get into the problem solving method. Detail the parameters necessary to solve the problem along with relevant tolerances. Encourage students to brainstorm. There must be a brainstorming. There is no only one solution to any problem. There are always multiple solutions. And the multiple solutions may be correct solution. <laughs> it is always stated that it is always good to give a right solution for one problem. It is not good to go with dealing with unwise problems and finding out a solution. It is not good to go with an unwise problem, a bad problem and try to find a solution. Uh, we can go for it, a bad problem and we will come up with a very good solution. What is the use of that solution? But it is always good try to find a solution to a very good problem. That solution may not be really a very good solution. But it is always good to find a solution to a good problem than to find a good solution to a bad problem. So the mentor should have that ability to make the differentiation between the bad problem and the good problem. He should encourage the students to brainstorm and find out n number of solutions to the good problem. And then on the basis of that hypothesis, develop a conceptual solution. I again re reiterate. Framing a hypothesis is very important. A good hypothesis will definitely lead you to framing the good objectives. And the good objectives will definitely lead you to understand the methodologies, to suggest the methodologies to achieve those goals, to achieve those objectives. So first step is to frame the hypothesis very correctly. Identify and prioritize topics that need to be researched in the order to solve the problem. If I am going to develop a vehicle, then definitely I must know the different subsystems required there. I should ask my students to study the subsystem. That is the suspension system, steering system, then braking system, cooling system, transmission system. So I should ask my students to study these subsystems very carefully. I should ask my students to study the material requirement, which material is 
strong and which material is light so that the weight is reduced i should ask my students to go through the different testing methods which are used for vehicle testing and out of those which can be used at my laboratory level so this fundamental study the development part it is the role of instructor the mentor to take the group to this knowledge level bring it develop its level and then offer the problem for finding out the solution develop an action plan a time bound action plan industry want a solution always in a specified time it is always related with the money each and every business sector is working to earn profit and it is not at all bad because it is a business model they are required there to earn profit and earning profit is always related with the time if the solution is found out in a minimum possible time as compared to the competitor definitely the returns will be more so the industry want the solution as fast as possible and for this it is the responsibility of the mentor to make the students aware of the project planning different aspects of project planning and they should also be made aware of following the deadlines so this is the role of a mentor implement the action plan and fabricate a prototype of the design solution summarize the results in both written and oral reports it is very important a concise precise report is required which will highlight the findings in a most promising way so that it will impress the user to accept the solution and it will also lead to a feasible solution it will lead to a 100% or you can say the maximum possible achievement as per the expectation that is reporting a presentation the presentation is very important it is a sort of reflection what we do it is to be presented and when we present we get the results in form of some sort of the reflexes so that reflection is important you can just find out from the faces whether it is understood or not now and and this is i i, I always say that what is the limitation of online class this is one of the limitation of online class so in the classroom we see the faces of the students if there are 50 60 80 students at least we can see most of the faces and those faces if they are interacting with you you can very well get your back pattern that okay yes what i am saying is understood it is accepted but in the online mode i don't know how many of are connected i don't know how many of are really attending the class i don't know how many of the students are understanding what i am saying of course there are very innovative methods of uh, assessing this some of you must have attended the coursera or edx classes or even the human value um, uh, universal human value classes by aict wherein they ask us to attend all sessions the 90% attendance is compulsory and just to check whether the attendee is attending the session or not there are always a surprise poll at any point of time you will find on your screen that there is a poll so if you are not attending the session you will miss that poll in between you will find that there is a quiz so if you miss the quiz it is gone and the aict has said that you must at least respond to 90% of the poll you must respond to 90% of the quizzes and at the end there is a test the test you should at least get 60% of the marks 
so to get the 60% mark the necessary to attain all classes at the end of the session there is a day assignment which will which takes at least 2 hours to write that assignment so these methods are there which we can check whether there is a proper participation of the students or not but this presentation is required that whatever i have done whether it is reaching to the end user in the same way as expected by the end user this is necessary and the project based learning it also enhances the communication skill the presentation skills the professionalism in presentation the students get the professionalism in the presentation the team should be encouraged to communicate the results to the entire class and hence allow other students to learn from their efforts there should be a peer evaluation a cross evaluation peer evaluation if the group is presenting we should ask other groups to evaluate and not only evaluate in terms of marks but evaluation a subjective evaluation of each and every parameter this subjective evaluation will improvise the knowledge content of other groups there should also be a self evaluation that if i am the presenter then i must be asked to evaluate myself and my dear friends since i joined coep from 2007 i am doing i am using this method of self evaluation with my project groups for btech as well as mtech and i offer them a questionnaire and to make themselves assess on the scale of 10 to my surprise and satisfaction 90% of the students they have evaluated on the same platform same ground in the same range as of my evaluation and i really satisfied because the students this shows that the students they respect themselves they self evaluate they do understand at the same time they respect the faculty also very rarely i have seen that the students have given 10 out of 10 but all those 11 points the student usually read themselves as 7 6 even i have seen that the students have written 0 0 i asked why you have written 0 the student said that sir i have not taken any efforts in report making my contribution in report making is 0 i have not contributed in report making i have received the copy of report with me but i have contributed in the designing so that's why my contribution 9.5 in the design so if we believe in the students they will definitely perform with the same intention so now my recommendation with this i i feel that the project based learning must be introduced to the engineering students also we are doing this project based learning on mini project basis on major projects even some lab practices are also there but as a special separate entity i feel that it should be introduced in our system of course thanks to the aict that now the internship is there a compulsory internship for all students so at least we can convert this internship internship in form of a project based learning by offering by discussing with the industries and offering the problem statements which will follow or which will be in line with the project project based learning so that collaborative efforts with industry can be done so that the project based learning is now initiated and it is used on a better and a greater context so what is my recommendation <laughs> again of it is not only my recommendation it is also based on one of the research paper that is and the reference is given uh, the first year 
that let there be the interrelationship of science, engineering, and mathematics. Mathematics is really important, and I am pleased that in my institution, that is COEP, we have introduced, we are advocating, we are canvassing. that the mathematics should be compulsory subject for all eight semesters and yes there are there is mathematics subject for all eight semester there is mathematics compulsory for mtech students also mathematics is the really fundamental of engineering the analysis part in first year we should develop the problem statement which will be a combination of these fundamental sciences the science engineering and mathematics that is physics chemistry mathematics applied mechanics all this club together we should form the problem statements the second year designing for sustainability using some of the known components we should ask the students to develop a small sort of setups to work on them i had one experience with this uh, while doing i i teach subject heat transfer and uh, one fine day five girls five girls they met me and they said sir we want to do some project i said what type of project you want to do they said sir we want to play with some setups we want to play with some setups i said okay then i offered them a project that in the fifth semester there is heat transfer and in the fourth semester there is no heat, in the sixth semester there is no heat transfer so the heat transfer subject is offered in the r semester so for one semester the setups are idle and during that year there were five setup due to some error happen a mistake made by our attendant five setup they were the wiring was burned and the setup were not working at all so i offered those five girls i said that you do one thing you make all those five setup bring them in a working condition you have one month with you you do what ever you want if you want some material just yes, we will provide that material instruments we will provide you instrument but at the end i want those five setups i want those five setups ready to my surprise those five girls they work with the setup they gave me some list of the equipment the instruments required thermocouples and some uh, voltmeter ammeter the which were faulty wires some instruments and to my surprise at the end of i think 22nd or 23rd day those girls approach me and said that sir the setups are ready i used to visit the lab day every day and i found them working i asked them what is your learning experience the girls said sir vargat jevdo heat transfer shiklo hoto tyacha peksha jast ithe shikayla milalo and this is what is expected while repairing those five equipment in addition to the equipment they also learned the fundamental they also learned how to use the tools they learned how to go for wiring they learned what are the specifications of thermocouple how to assemble them how to assemble the voltmeter ammeter how to test the setup how to calibrate the setup so this was additionally given received by them and it added to their knowledge content so this is nothing but and those the girls they were in the third semester in the third year so it is a system approach to engineering and lastly balancing depth and breadth the project that we offer in the final year i said that it should be a t project it should be a t project making our graduate a t executive that is having in depth vertical knowledge in your domain as well as having a broad spectrum of allied branches allied requirements which will make the engineer a successful engineer
Why is the project based learning important? Yes, we have already gone through this. Help students to develop skill for living in knowledge based, highly technology or society. Project based learning and technology use bring a new relevance to the learning. PBL leads itself to authentic assessment, promotes lifelong learning, accommodates students with varying learning styles and differences, and the research supports project based learning means what? Even industry also want the students having such type of versatile experience. I will again quote one example. Uh, most of the new institutions, they have SAE clubs in their institutions and they, they do take part in Baha, Supra, If You Cycle, Tiffin, all these competitions held by uh, SAE. They, um, we had a team and, and, and that team, I think since last number of years, the COEP is winning the uh, Baha. And it was, I think, first or second Baha, wherein the COEP won the title. And the Baha team students, uh, they were very good in their uh, sort of uh, hands-on. They were good in the, their own subsystems. But unfortunately, uh, they, none of them qualified for the interview. And I will not name that company. That time, they the benchmark was 7.5 CGPA. And none of them had 7.5 CGPA. So they were not qualified. They didn't appear for presentation also. Then when the interview started, the company was related with the automobile. They were experts in that. And when the interview started, the panel asked the training and placement officer, sir, I want the list of the students from this selected students who are member of your Baha team. So the training and placement officer just search out the names and he said, sir, no one is from the Baha team because they have not qualified as their CGPA is not more than 7.5. The HR person said, nothing doing. Please call the entire team. And the team was called. The team was interviewed. And four students from the team were selected. Though they were not qualified as per 7.5 CGPA is concerned. But as they were from the Baha team, the interview was so fantastic that at the end, HR has made a remark that these students, they know a lot of things as far as automobile design, fabrication, testing is concerned. This is, this is the outcome of project-based learning. The student get expertise in the domain on which they work. And your industry also want such type of skilled person, the additional skills. In addition to their domain knowledge, they want other skills also. The question is always, when we go for a project-based learning, how to evaluate this? This is a proposed evaluation. It is not a only a, a, it's a proposed evaluation given by Dr. Aruna Shekhar. He is from Massey University. The paper published, it is uh, in the one conference that ASWE annual conference and exposition, the project-based learning, engineering, design, education, sharing best practices. And she has already shared some of the experience experiments she has done with the student and how it can be evaluated. Always there is a question, sir, sir, it's okay, but it's not a mark. We believe in the mark list and whatever is there in the mark list, that is more important than what the student know. So to put everything in the mark list, there must be some evaluation scheme. So this is a suggested evaluation scheme by the author. A project proposal that is framing a project proposal, it will be a team activity. The concept design assessment, the detailed design, oral presentation, final project report, and logbook and self-reflection. The self-reflection means what is my contribution, what is my learning experience. This self-reflection is there. So this is this can be changed from, from model to model. 
from problem statement to problem statement from institute to institute from individual to individual but in short whatever components are there in the project based learning each and every component should get a due weightage as far as evaluation of the student is concerned now 10 take away tips begin with the end in mind and uh, always this is that when we frame a problem statement the creator of the problem statement must know the answer to that question it is really necessary at least some possible solution must be known to the creator of the problem so that this will lead you to a solution as early as possible it will not lead you to a multiple unending options it will lead to yes it will it should lead to some sort of available more option but those options should not be unending options so the creator must know the end in mind make a tough topic fun this research learning should be a fun it should not be under stressed so it is the duty of the instructor to make this tough topic fun focus on standards what is required what is required but don't be so rigid always there must be a flexibility the flexibility of boundaries must be there to accommodate all variations all disruptions the the standards must be accepted but there must be some sort of space to accommodate the changes there must be some space to vent out certain bad things if always there is a boundary the bad things are not vent out then there is a possibility of explosion so there must be always some venting provided and some good things to come in start small when you are new ah now we are adopting the problem based uh, project based learning so if i am not at all aware of this then i should not go with a very huge big problem statement uh, design a uh, aeroplane uh, this is a problem statement design an aeroplane i do not know how to go with so i should not go with a very big statement i should start with a small statement a very small problem and get own hands on get own expertise get own success and with this success stories then i should go for a some sort of complex problem test drive the final product before starting the project ate yacha artha kasa see it is before starting the project test drive the final product means this can be a simulation part a virtual simulation also that if i am proposing is this solution whether this solution will run or not run so this analysis may be on paper analysis this analysis may be using some technology this analysis may be a sort of analysis doing in mind but this is necessary that the solution which i am going to offer whether it will run or not that test drive must be there start your project with an entry event it is celebrating each and everything this shows that it is you have to celebrate it you have to celebrate the start of your project and when you celebrate it will develop a sort of fondness among the student they will try to love their project they will try to love their problem they will start to put more efforts because it is celebration and each and every success must be celebrated at intermediate stages what are results are there they must be celebrated with the students the celebration is a source of motivation celebration it is always an outcome of appreciation 
and the appreciation is always a source of motivation appreciation it is nothing but it is a source of recognition when the student know that what your results are there they are recognized they are accepted means they are recognized means whatever i am doing it is correct i am going on the right track it is a source of motivation it will boost his energy and the student or the group will try to exert more they will try to offer more and thus this will lead to more positive results so hence start your project with an entry event make it a event make it an event celebrate it keep students in loop whatever discussion is going on don't do the discussions only with the team leader it always happens it also happened with me and to my surprise when i just join and i i i took the charge of my group as velocity racer in 2014 yuvraj bajaj was there who was a team leader and we used to discuss so on one fine day i called yuvraj bajaj and i i started discussing with him what i wanted to uh, let he know and the team know so he said sir please stop i will call all the students in the evening and then we will discuss and he went i was a bit disturbed sir yani asa ka kela mhanje mi sangal challo ani ha manala ki nahi then after some time i realized and i accepted his maturity that yuvraj bajaj wanted all the students to know what i am saying he wanted all students to be in loop and then we had a discussion in the evening which started for two and half hours nearly very exhaustive discussion and at the end while leaving the group i narrated this story to all students that this is your leader who wanted you all to know what we are discussing it is the duty of the instructor mentor to get all students in the loop the information sharing information should reach to all students all receivers there should not be isolation of the information set clear deadlines this is must but allow some flexibility there must be allowance create a balanced assessment plan we have to anticipate and accept that the group it is a heterogeneous group it is not homogeneous group it is a heterogeneous group all the group members they have their own attitude aptitude knowledge level acceptance level performance level and it is not but the assessment is to be individually based whatever qualities the student have and how he or she exercise those qualities in getting the results it should not be compared with anyone else there must be a proper balanced evaluation plan see on a conventional course structure when we go with a pen and pen examination it is not possible to have such type of balance evaluation plan because it is whether answer is right or wrong accordingly you will get the marks but when it is a attribute analysis which cannot be very well quantified then this analysis must be a person dependent analysis when i am using a person dependent analysis it is not a favorism it is not a favorism to anyone it is analysis based on the qualities of the student and how he or she is exercising those qualities for attaining the final results and this is how the balanced attend assessment plan is required the conclude projects with a bang again there is a celebration once you get once you get the results they must be celebrated whether those results are 
fruitful or not fruitful that will be decided later on but they must be celebrated they must be celebrated and this is and this is necessary so this is what i want to explain about the project based learning that is what is project based learning what are the pros and cons how we can proceed now the question is when i am dealing with project based learning of course you may ask sir what is your own experience with project based learning did you ever offered such type of projects to the students then i will say yes i have a good experience with project based learning and it starts with my own learning i joined iti in 1989 21 of november 1989 i joined iti amravati as a vice principal and we had a different trades there and as a vice principal it is a administrative job so one day an instructor came to my cabin with an indent an indent had a list of some components there which were required to be procured and i did a mistake in recommending that indent that indent went to the principal the principal was mr modak he is a very senior principal most mr modak he called me and he said mr dhaman gaukar you have put your signature here like, yes sir i have put do you know what is this i said no he didn't say anything he corrected that and next day he again called me i entered his cabin and he called one of the instructor a very senior instructor he is mr sarkar and he was instructor of uh, motor mechanic which is called as motor mechanic we deals with engines he called instructor of motor mechanic sarkar and he said sarkar sir now just take mr dhawan gaukar with you and now ask mr dhawan gaukar to dismantle the engine and ask him to assemble the engine this was my first task given to me by professor by mr moda he asked me he asked mr sarkar to give me a two cylinder engine i still remember it was a two cylinder engine it was given to me with a tool box a tool kit and two students with me and he asked no he was he instructed the students not to help me in dismantling but only help me in providing the tools and if extra efforts are required you use your efforts mr modak asked me to dismantle the entire engine and assemble the entire engine that hands on experience explored me made me acquainted with different components of engine their names their specifications the assembly structure the sequence and not only this how it is to be open and how it is to be put in it it was my first project based learning experience which i had as a vice principal i salute the mentality of professor moda because he wanted when i am going to take some decisions then i must be well aware of that what exactly happening there this was my first project based learning experience it taught me a lot it has changed entire my presumption my mindset was changed and then i realized that i must do the things on my own i must have the hands on i must know the different tools i must know how they are used i must know the system how it works the second experience was with ashok leland gadegao in government polytechnic sapoli i used to teach metrology and quality control and in the 
metrology quality control there is a topic called as acceptance testing uh, some of you those who deal with metrology quality control they must be aware of this acceptance testing and the acceptance testing is usually in two types one is the performance testing and second the geometrical testing we i used to teach the student geometrical testing and there are different uh, parallelism straightness flatness etc etc one student asked me sir how to check this and i really wondered what to do and in statistics there was one topic as process capability study wherein we are required to find out the process capability index and the statistical analysis is done but the students were curious about knowing how it is done how it is done so what i did i contacted the authority from ashok lelan gadegao those who are from bhandara they must be knowing while going to bhandara to sakoli at gadega this ashok leland factory so i went there ashok leland and i contacted their personal personal team and the technical team and i requested that my student want to experience this how the acceptance testing is done and how the process capability is done the technical team and the hr team they were really delighted they said that sir okay we will do one thing ah uh, in bhandara sakoli chandrapur particularly bhandara sakoli gondia the hindi is spoken very well they said sir ek kaam karte hain bole aap aisa kijiye ki aapke bachchon ko yahan le aaiye aur hum log unko batate hain ki process capability study kaise kiya jata hai aur acceptance testing kaise kiya jata hai so maine kaha ha sir unko le aate hain fir main ek din ko leke gaya student experience they learned students were there for a complete day from 8 am to 4 pm one complete shift 8 am to 4 pm complete shift they were there then during the next shift i said that sir ek kaam aur karte hain har shift mein bachchon ko yahan le jaane se to main aise kehta hu ki hum log bachchon ko ek kaam de dete hain if you have your some machines to be tested acceptance testing my team my students will do that task for you if you want to check the process capability of your machines my students will do that task and i am really pleased to say that it was also accepted and that batch that batch they did their experiments which were a part of metrologic quality control there were two experiments one was study of process capability state process capability it was converted as as performing a process capability test for some machines in ashok leland gadegaon it was converted as a performance experiment and second was second was to find out the to perform the acceptance testing for some machines the students did did got that hands on yes madam vrinda raute madam any question please Vrinda Raute, ma'am, any question? <laughs> so this this has given me a lot experience. Then a very innovative experience. Some of you have already uh, must have visited my lab, that is Fors Marshall Steam Technology Center. Uh, we had we had a very unique Babcock Wilcox boiler there. and one fine day mr jim adams from stanford university mr naushad fouls they visited coep and they found that some of the old equipments they are not working so there was an agreement that exchange of equipment so we we uh, made a agreement that we will pass on the cross tandem type steam engine to fouls marshall and instead fouls marshall will give us four equipment it was only to do the four equipment But the question was how to what to do with these four equipments. So I did some brainstorming for myself, and came to conclusion that we should use these four equipments for making a laboratory. And I given a proposal to my HOD, then HOD late Dr. S R Kajal, 
he was the hod so i give a proposal he also accepted and he liked that proposal and we approach force marshal that we want to convert this equipment into a laboratory but how to do this so then we offer this problem statement to the students then we take students and we ask the students to come forward and apply to work on this project to my surprise nearly 21 students they come forward and they show the readiness to work on development of a steam technology center in coep which will cater to needs of performing the experiments from second year to final year that is study dynamics fraction measurement then boiler efficiency measurement then uh, steam nozzle experiment study of steam trap for energy conservation management then heat exchanger effectiveness experiment so they come forward 21 students they come forward we interacted we interacted we have given them some task and from those 21 students the seven students they were selected and this task was given to seven students to use those equipments and convert these equipments into a workable steam technology center a steam laboratory and i am proud to mention that those seven students they designed the entire lab eventually one of the student abhishek mantravadi he got so expertise that he was selected by force marshal and he joined force marshal after join force marshal he didn't forget his lab he got the entire set of fabricated there what they design in their btech project he got that entire set up fabricated there and he got that entire set up erected in the laboratory in the place in coep he took the efforts to get it commissioned and then the lab was inaugurated at the hands of dr fc kohli late fc kohli on 24th november 2010 and the lab was fully funded by force marshal it is called as force marshal steam technology center which is an outcome of btech project the two btech projects took place there four student in one group and three students in one group but my dear friends initially there were 21 students those who were exposed to this steam technology domain they learned a lot they studied they studied thermodynamics fundamentally they studied piping fundamentally they could understand what is the pressure drop how to manage it which are the different fittings to be provided what is the ibr regulations which are to be followed which usually we do not teach them in any of the course the ibr regulations the ibr course we do not teach but the students learn this to teach and so and abhishek mantravadi joined force marshal this is the best result of industry institute interaction and outcome of project based learning entire lab which is still functioning i know that some of you have already visited that lab and it is still functioning this is the case study which most of the institutes have the efi cycle hybrid vehicle design and develop where the ac nis they offer a problem statement which states that it is a problem statement design develop and run three wheel tadpole arrangement hybrid vehicle remember see the problem statement it is specific problem statement what is expected it is designing it is expected it is developing means fabrication is also expected it is to run on the track it is to be run what is the structure of the three wheel vehicle it is a three wheel that pole arrangement it is not a delta arrangement it is hybrid but how hybrid it is electrical plus manual so the problem statement is clearly defined now it is required to go for a team selection so we have selected the team as per the system requirement that is for transmission for suspension for braking and for roll cage all this as per the systems the team was selected and this team is heterogeneous team not only from the mechanical but the team members are from civil electrical instrumentation metallurgy computer production 
So from all nine branches, the team were selected. You will be surprised. The satellite club, which is in the COEP, and we have a very honor to say that we launch our satellite swayam. It will be surprising that the satellite club is instituted by a person, Bausar, who is from civil engineering. So he is an instrumental in starting the satellite club, who is a person from civil engineering. So the project-based learning, when it is extended heterogeneously and in the different domains, the results are really good. Then the preparatory phase, where we discuss about the sponsorship, study of system, different softwares to be learned. Then the next part is development of a conceptual design. Various trial conceptual designs were tried, and from those, a final design is there. Then according to design, the material to be procured, the student will go to the market. They will deal with the vendor. They will see the material. They will know different material, their properties, how to procure them, how to test it, how to use it. They will also know the different purchase procedures required, conforming to the institutional laws, conforming to institution rules, and even the government rules. So they will know the purchase procedures. <laughs> Lastly, they will make a prototype as a conceptual design. And then they will find out whether there are certain errors, mistakes. Those they are rectified. And then a final assembly is done, which will be as per the design. Then this is to be tested. Before launching the vehicle, it is to be tested on the testing pad. So we test that vehicle on the testing pad. The performance testing is done. After the painting, etc., is done, and then is it visible? Sir, is it visible? Uh, no, sir, it's not visible. Oh, oh sorry. I think I will have to. Uh, Unshare this. Will you to unshare? I'll share this presentation and uh, turn the video on. It may then show the video. video is to be loaded. <coughs> now, is it visible? No, it's still not visible. Huh? Still not visible, sir. Okay, so I will not spend time in showing this because already time is running. Yes, it shows. I will not, I will go with the, as already we are short of time, I will not go with the playing the video. Yeah, this is visible. Oh, sir, it is not visible. So thus, the, the video is, uh, highlighted the different stages what I have explained, those were uh, combined in a good good video and thus it all stated how the uh, problem statement is formed, then how the team is selected, how the prototype is made, how the project plan is done and thus ultimately it went with the situation. Then the presentation. Ultimately when we go with this is to be offered to the market for, for their understanding. And our student, if they are given an opportunity, they come up with a very good sort of presentation skills. Is this visible? Hello, is this visible? Lastly, the results. Yes, sir. Once we go with yes, sir, yes, sir. It is visible. Once we go with all these stages, of course, the results are pleasant. And definitely, my team, that is the Ify Cycle team, since last six competitions, we are the winner in the three competitions. 
we are the second winner in the two uh, two competitions so this is what the results will get and it is you will find that the faces the very satisfied faces of the all students they are all with smiles it is nothing but a sort of achievement it is a recognition it is achievement and this gives a lot this girl she is a unique girl and she got the national level uh, first prize as best girl student participation her contribution in the team is remarkable so and you will find that these are the prizes which are won not it is not just to say that we have won but it is that how the results they will they make the students encourage to do better and better this is the statement of the captain of this team i am nitin rathod captain of team velocity sir which manufactures a hybrid vehicle and participates in the national level competition for the last two years i am working with velocity sir which helped me in my overall development while working on the problem statement i learned to implement my theoretical engineering knowledge in practical apart from that being a part of team i learned team work communication skills leadership qualities which will be going to help me in my future career considering the current situation to be good engineer we should have more knowledge apart from our books like latest trends in the industries technological advancement in the industries which are learned by joining the technical club velocity research in our college this is a sort of a common feeling of all students who work on such type of project based learning projects these are common factors in all industries or all institutions the last part is virtual laboratory i have also asked the three groups to work on virtual thermal imaging laboratory virtual heat transfer laboratory and virtual fluid laboratory wherein the experience is that while dealing with these the students have framed at least 5 to 6 virtual experiments in the domain of that subject content there are five experiments in transfer five experiments in fluid and five experiments in thermal the students have narrated the success story that sir itna sara sikh gaye iska ke kabhi kitab mein padha bhi nahi tha wo sab kuch sikh gaye while developing those lab experiments they really work hard and this is the outcome of project based learning now most of the institutions have a small groups working on this project based learning we have mini projects we have projects we have seminars but i will advocate that let this project based learning be introduced as a compulsory part in most of the institutions let there be for a course for a semester for a year but let there be some assignments some content which are to be evaluated on the basis of project based learning so that they will make the students more versatile for the industry they will be employment ready nowadays we go for finishing school but this will make the students employment ready this is what success is that is analysis solution process objectives teamwork a good vision and of course the skill set if all these together they come together definitely we as an institution we as faculty a change agent the students as our ambassadors they will definitely get the success is it impossible i think it is not impossible because the answer itself is hidden in this word impossible it is yes i can make it possible it is our responsibility as a faculty as an institution as a change agent that we should make this possible and we should make our students more employable more successful more confidence oriented thank you very much these are some of the references which i have used
thank you now this is open for interaction uh, please ask as many questions as possible it is not only asking questions but i will also request some of the participants to share their experiences if time permits so that i will also come to know the best practices which mo which most of the institutions do following so that it will add to my content and i will be able to follow those practices in my institutions i know that always each and every institution each and every person has definitely good content with them so it is my yes. intention is not to only interact to ask question but my intention is to share the good things that you have so that and also allow me allow me to adopt those good things and make in my institution thank you very much uh, thank you sir i would like to ask uh, all the participants uh, do they any any have a question they can ask is there any participant want to ask question a uh, sister should i unshare my presentation and keep video on uh, yes sir hmm. uh, sir uh, there is uh, one participant uh, jyoti uh, dhanake uh, she has one question in fe project based learning research paper should be prepared by the students please discuss after the session she put this comment uh, in a comment box yeah in fe project based learning fe yes. project based learning what 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 she want to say fe project means what uh, first year engineering maybe okay first uh -huh. year or finite element no no it is not for uh, first yes. year project based learning research paper should be prepared by students yes uh, i am of opinion that whatever we do it must be properly documented and if it has a content of presentation definitely it must be presented in form of a good research paper i am also advocate of saying that the first author should be student because the work is done by the student and we should take the responsibility of second author but a research paper we should encourage students to write research paper even that can also be treated as a project based learning if we offer students some good research paper to read and come up with a review paper out of that research paper it can also be treated as a good project based learning making a good review paper the first year students or second year students they can be motivated to write this type of research research based papers okay uh, thank you sir uh, is there any other questions so i must say there must not be any questions from the participants so Uh, before i propose the vote of thanks i would like to request all the participants to uh, kindly on their camera to take a screenshot of the session okay so uh, you can turn your cameras on so uh, sir thank you very much for giving me an opportunity and i thank all the participants for patiently listening and attending the session i will request them to Uh, send their questions if they have to my email id and also yes, uh, a very critical feedback uh, some the point for improvement for point for development and if they have good case studies please feel free to share those case studies 
because I really want those to be implemented in my institution. And thank you. Wish you a good day. Yes, sir. Care for this pandemic situation. Yeah. Take care of yourself and your family. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So uh, I'm here to propose a vote of thanks. Uh, I would like to uh, thank our guest, uh, guest speaker, Dr. Dhaman Gaukar, sir, for uh, for their availability and uh, enlightening us with their personal experiences, uh, especially with the uh, IT experience with the uh, Modak, sir, uh, where they give them a task of uh, disassemble and assemble the engine. Uh, and uh, the point where uh, where he explained, he elaborated the uh, the necessity of teamwork, uh, how the instructor should uh, instructor role is very important while forming a team. Uh, then need of integrating the branches of engineering rather than to uh, construct uh, construct the rigid uh, rigid format of the engineering branches. So thank you, sir. Once again, I would like to thank. Uh, yeah, am I audible? So uh, again, I want to uh, thank uh, Dr. Dhaman Walker, sir, for taking out time from their busy schedule. Uh, again, uh, I extend my uh, gratitude toward the principal of VPKVIT for allowing us to, uh, for, for the arrangement of this program. Uh, then I would like to thank uh, Dr. A.P. Hureker uh, for arranging such a, a great, uh, great program for us, uh, which, is, which is very helpful uh, in our future, in our career. Uh, so, last but not least, uh, thanks to all the participants. Uh, thank you so much. So, with this uh, vote of thanks speech, uh, I conclude the uh, session two of the tour. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Now I will. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. आणि मी पहिल्या दिवसापासून जवळजवळ सगळे सेशन अटेंड करतो आहे गोरे सरांचं खूप छान सेशन झालं कालचं दीपिका मॅडमचं सेशन खूप छान झालं अभ्यंकर सरांचं सेशन खूप चांगलं झालेलं आहे मी जवळजवळ सगळे सेशन मी अटेंड करतो आहे आणि चांगलं झालं थँक्यू Hello. Uh, next session will start within five minutes. There are some instructions I would like to pass on. IST Chairman Dr. Pratap Singh Desai, sir, will be there in tomorrow's conclusion function, as well as AICT official Colonel B. Venkat will also be there. Our principal and other, author other authorities will be there for the conclusion function. Tomorrow, there will be a most interesting session of Dr. B.B. Ahuja, sir, Director of College of Engineering, Pune. And today, last sessions, last three sessions, we can say, are from our faculties. So be there, and tomorrow's session may be extended up to 2 p.m. Examination will be there on tomorrow, and we are sharing you YouTube link of all videos you can access and you can study from that pattern of examination and everything I will send it to you today evening and uh, that is from my side. So I wish you all the best. Tomorrow there will be examination and revised schedule will be there so that I will convey you. Thank you.
हेलो हेलो शास्त्री सर वेलकम हेलो हेलो कैन यू हियर मी यस मैडम आई कैन हियर यू यस सर वेलकम सर इफ यू वांट टू चेक योर स्क्रीन यस वी कैन चेक द स्क्रीन एंड लेट्स चेक वेदर यूट्यूब ऑडियो इज कमिंग और नॉट ओके यस सर यस सर let me share the screen whether presentation is visible madam my presentation is visible or not your voice is not coming yes sir it is visible okay okay uh, let me check uh, the video Whether audio is coming of that video? Yes, sir. Audio is coming. Yes, sir. Sure. Yes, sir. V very good. Yes, sir. From engineering to medicine to 3D graphics. Audio is coming properly. Yes, sir. Here it is good, sir. Audio means. Uh, However, audio from that video. Yes, sir. Audio from video. That led. Yes, sir. Fine. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. I request all participants. Please rejoin the session. We will start with the two-minute the session. Yes, shall we start? Yes. So, good afternoon to one and all. I, Gauri Bhote, welcome to you all for this one-week refresher program on innovative teaching learning methods. I am very happy today to share with you that the speakers of today's session are senior faculties from our institute. So I welcome first Dr. Rajiv Shastri, Professor, Electronics and Telecommunication Department, BPKBIT. I also welcome Dr. Anil Hewrekar, Head of General Science and Engineering Department, BPKBIT, and Mr. Vishal Kore, Training and Placement Officer from BPKBIT. Welcome you all, sir. So in education, our main aim is to improve the performance of students. and it can be possibly done by using effective teaching learning process and for this our faculties from our institute always try to implement some new innovative ideas and implement some best practices in our institute so today's topic of session is innovative strategy by bpkbit for effective teaching learning as a case study so for first session is on topic of gamification of quiz and tools so for this i would like to introduce dr rajveer shastri in brief he 
has been awarded with PhD degree from Sri Guru Gobind Singh Institute of Engineering and Technology Nanded in the year 2014. He has completed M.Tech in 2002 from the same institute. He completed his B.Tech in Electronics from College of Engineering Ambedkar in the year 2000. He has about 17 years of teaching experience. Presently, he is working as a professor in tele electronics and telecommunication department, BPKBIT. He is working in this institute since 2003. His research con contribution: he published total 35 papers in national and international conferences and journals. He also presented his research paper in international conference at USA and Brazil. He was awarded with summer research fellowship from CARE IIT Delhi in the year 2013. He has shouldered many responsibilities in the institute, so I mentioned few of them. Currently, he is working as a dean academic at BPKBIT. He also worked as work as head of department electronics and telecommunication at bpkbit he has visited many abroad universities like north carolina state university michigan tech university and san jose university usa so with this short introduction i request dr shastri sir to start the session please sir over to you thank you madam for your kind introduction hope i am uh, audible to everyone yes sir yeah, thank you uh, first of all i would like to thank organizers uh, specifically dr ap hureker and his team for uh, giving me an opportunity uh, to present uh, the things that i would like to share with all uh, uh, teachers from india and uh, also dr bichkar sir principal who is guiding uh, factor throughout the academics conduction here in vpkbit i would like to uh, share here some of the pedagogies uh, or the model of pedagogies and what is the most important thing that i feel is uh, there is necessity of gamification of uh, overall gamification of education uh, but today i will uh, maintain my scope to gamification of peace and that is also a first step of it because gamification is a wide area and uh, i feel that has to be priority uh, priority involved inside uh, the assessment of students so uh, so that is what today's my topic is gamification of peace and tools before going to that we are listening from last four five days uh, to various eminent speakers uh, and everybody has uh, given their experience and thought process today also uh, dr dhaman gaukar sir has uh, given a very uh, nice overview of pedagogies problem based learning project based learning Uh, and how they implement cuep has been a role model for all the institutes uh, across the india so here it is one of the subject pedagogies that i have worked out for uh, one of the branch as there are so many techniques that can be implemented and that depends upon the faculty and the content of the subject uh, also we should think of uh, students for example if it is a project based learning uh, makes appealing to every faculty and also students but if we assign projects to all uh, for all subjects it will be difficult for students though it is appealing so it is necessary to configure all what pedagogies that we have learned through uh, our experiences and all the speakers that they have guided here uh 
so they should be distributed and a pedagogy model of a department that should be prepared that is what i feel so just one example here i am going to share it it's not necessary it should be like this only this is my perception but with everyone's skill and knowledge they can in, they can give a wonderful appearance to the pedagogy model or strategy of a department okay so that there should be uniform distribution of major pedagogies that are implemented for uh, the department so for example here signals and system is one of the subject which is mathematics based so you need to take some prerequisites for signals and systems and uh, one interesting thing is done here is uh, last unit has been taught first so generally it happens last unit is uh, taught in hurry because uh, we lack in time so students attendance is also less so if it is independent that unit is independent then it can be covered at first okay. an industry kind of tool matlab can be introduced here even it is not in syllabus okay. so similarly for electronic devices you can use uh, open source softwares which are freely available and lot of course courses are going on electronic circuits and machines you can use animation bank because uh, it is very interesting uh, for students to see how the currents are flowing and how machines are working data structures and algorithms it is important subjects for placement point of view so skills uh, in the programming that should be developed okay and digital electronics yes that can be a project based learning um, that can be utilized here okay uh electronic measuring instruments you can use youtube videos which are available and audit course which are generally neglected uh, by students but that can be make interesting by giving useful audit course like maybe a japanese language and they are support by using udemy and nptel course okay so this is the model similarly a model for third year okay what are the pedagogies that can be pedagogies and tools that will be useful okay it's not that that should be used multiple pedagogies that can be used for a subject just i am focusing one major pedagogies which will contribute uh, for uh, making learning easy so for microcontrollers you can add an activity based learning you can give a direct pcb and you can ask students to prepare their own microcontroller board and keep on programming the same board that they are using for mechatronics you can establish a robotic clubs and club club culture that has been uh, really demonstrated by cuep uh, which is a role model okay similarly project based and learning can be in, employed for microcontroller based projects or electronics system design based projects here are again one more pedagogy that you can uh, notice for computer networks like uh, instead of teaching only theory that learning should be made activity based students can be made uh, to work out a network for their labs or computer or uh, department or even in college uh, one you can see electronic uh, elective one actually that is electronic product design and that electronic product design there is uh, a lot of activities that are happening related to uh, import substitution what are the things that we are importing can we make in india okay so uh, first step obviously come that we must understand that product and we should open that product and see how it is and that's called as reverse engineering that can be applied okay uh, projects lot of efforts that are been taken by faculties to work out projects and if we categorize as per our uh, vision mission goals okay that will give you and as a good outcomes from this project stage so intention behind showing this pedagogy model or strategy of implementing pedagogies that we have learned okay is instead of uh, just following one or two pedagogies let's have a mixture of pedagogies so students will be enriched in a better way so this was one uh, that i would like to share based on the interest of the students and the expertise of faculties also need of the uh, market lot of centers of uh, 
centers have been established intending them to go towards the excellence so uh, you can almost 30 to 35 centers have been established at the institute uh, starting from agricultural waste management innovation centers uh, web technologies arm center mahalanobis uh, center for cloud computing machine learning and all these centers are having their own uh, set of students that are enrolled for that lot of activities are being planned uh, they are connected with industries Uh, just one example that i would like to give as being engineers we are guided that we should solve the local problems baramati and surrounding area is agricultural prone area lot of agricultural uh, things are happening so we have established a center of agricultural uh, technologies where we are trying to support the uh, farmer community community with uh, technology support okay here are the exhibition students are going in mass 500 students have visited krushak uh, 2020 uh, which was where they have learned lot of agricultural developments and uh, supported with some kind of technologies like drones and uh, various product developments which have been appreciated by uh, our chief minister or vice chief minister a lot of various industries pani foundation people and uh, like you can see there amir khan was also there uh, also various dignitaries and uh, have appreciated this work uh, mr dr rehlan from brc uh, honorable uh, sunetra veni pawar and uh, one of the army officer he has uh, visited the vlsi uh, center all this this has possible because of students involvement and uh, uh faculty's involvement to work out a specific uh, work out towards a specific goal today apart from all these what is the need that i felt is there is a, a gamification is required in uh, this set of uh, pedagogies okay and uh, we know from our childhood right we are involved in uh, various games students are playing with pens uh the uh, anger kids are playing with matchbox okay so with available resources we try to gamify ourselves right which makes us happy and we learn from them a lot okay even though small games we uh, try to learn from a lot and this is what that picture says with whatever the resources a wonderful airplane that is coming out of here right so gamification that uh, caters your creativity innovativeness and it affects a learning learning a lot okay. if you have observed there is lot of gamification that is happening in businesses okay there is one report which says that uh, by 2025 almost 50% of businesses will be have at least one process gamified it has been observed that gamification in few experiments gamification has increased learning retention that has also increased the productivity because what happens in games you uh, reach to one level you make you become happy right and then you try to go for a next level that makes you more happy and if you uh, win that right so that joy is wonderful so so what is uh, important is the rewards that are coming from gamification and that has increased the productivity up to 80% okay so uh, these are the conclusions from some of the experiments that are done and uh, in last few lectures we have seen dr sutawne also has shared dr y v doshi has also shared that we fail uh, students why hesitate they do not speak or uh, they do not have more attempts the reason is we fear of failure okay and uh, if we work out gamification of the quizzes or anything or concepts okay we can try multiple times and there we students specifically do not bother about failure and there is the thing where learning will take place okay so that is the most important from, uh, point that gamification is going to help you is freedom of failure okay 
there are four orders of gamification the first is playful it's very easy it is basic level okay it makes you happy like here and uh, the picture shows here uh, musical stairs piano stairs that you can see at left hand side okay. and uh, when people are walking on that okay uh, the notes are coming and that makes them happy such lot of creative ideas are being implemented nowadays just to add uh, an enrichment to your experience okay so it has been observed that piano stairs has uh, good traffic compared to accelerator okay. so this is the first order of gamification a simple game that can be uh, thought of so that students will enjoy second is transaction Uh, transactional gamification now this transactional gamification yes i love this figure right and most of you also uh, received lot of rewards from google pay or any other sites okay maybe it is small 1 rupee 10 rupee or maybe it is better like next time okay but uh, that that makes you that makes you the transaction interesting so the rewards uh, policy in gamification is important and that should be implemented in our quiz yes there is third order of gamification which is called as social gamification and a wonderful example that we have here is of kbc right people are crazy about this game and lot of learning is happening from kbc of people who are participating and people who are just observing it right uh, the above picture shows a protein structure and this is one of the wonderful example of a gamification social gamification protein structure is lot is a big complex thing and this protein new protein structure has been defined by uh, the process of gamification by involving hundreds of people a game has been created and uh, everyone was playing that game and that has evolved a new protein structure okay so that was a magic of gamification and fourth order gamification is systematic gamification every nation every uh, citizen okay or nations will keep on playing this game and what can be this kind of game is city planning okay everyone will have some suggestion and all those suggestions will be incorporated in a game uh, with whatever the constraints that are there for a city uh, and a wonderful city that can be planned and for academics yes few experiments have, have been done to design a curriculum using gamification that sounds interesting right so these are various levels of gamification which uh, can be uh, implemented uh, the first and simple thing that generally we announce the topic okay which is uh, generally called as leader board okay so we should utilize these leader boards uh, to make uh, students uh, to get the feeling of achievement all these things are uh, very well aware of there are lot of software just to google it uh, word search and crosswords okay that can be included in your simple quizzes right we are going through online learning learning and lot of problem is there that how how we engage the students right so uh, these are very well and proven approaches that we can use uh, but very rarely used okay these are thought of only for uh, children but for one or small quizlets okay for i am not uh, saying that the complete question paper should be like this okay but one question or two questions in your interactive session uh, that will give a lot to students okay one of the good example of gamification that we have seen is uh, fun fairs okay lot of colleges are and students are interested in uh, fun fairs right so this fun fair we can uh, issue a stall if business plan is submitted okay so if that business plan is received then only that stall is allotted students will learn how to actually work out a business plan and they will have an uh, after that fun fair how their business has gone so they will uh, study all those concepts with fun okay with all these basics which everybody knows i would like to share few of the tools which are available online which will help you to add a little bit in 
a little bit flavor of gamification okay so uh, first is yes i i thought of to give you uh, the rewards and we all use google classroom okay so google classroom generally is used for uh, giving us sharing materials right 3 4 years back there was uh, very much efforts that uh, that were required to work out uh, to use google classroom but there is blessing in disguise okay uh, softwares like google classroom have been utilized by uh, primary and secondary school teachers nowadays okay now we have to go beyond it okay for example how a batches can be allotted okay you have top scorer should be given some reward okay and there is very simple process to allot a uh, allot a batch okay uh, that you are a superstar you are a best scorer okay and just with few clicks that can be done okay if time permits i will uh, give those demonstrations uh, otherwise i will go through the slides first and then i will talk about the demonstrations okay fine so we must incorporate these badges okay so that students feel reward yes there is uh, this is interesting uh, bitmoji uh, where uh, this is app is also there or online addons are there okay you can use this addons just you have to take a selfie of yours and upload on uh, bitmoji and you can use your uh, hope this is uh, Uh, much similar to my face okay so uh, adding such bitmojis also uh, will give you increase our interactiveness among the students okay so uh, this is one of the interesting thing that i found i, I thought i would sh i should share with you another one more important is uh, i found is there is one more add on which is called as loo okay so just you what you have to do is search in google uh, google chrome add on loom okay what's the benefit of this loom is uh, we know a lot of uh, we are recording our lectures right uh, using various softwares but this loom provides a single click recording okay it it also provides this kind of window and what okay that is also pro, also available in Uh, google classroom or zoom what is the benefit of it is immediate sharing copy link video and share it and second is uh, video editing is online immediately possible okay so you will i hope uh, you just try this you will enjoy this okay so that is one of the add on google add on loom that you can uh, try it on this is something again interesting where uh, i found that many websites are uh, wonderful websites and we want their contents that should be on our slides right so instead of copying and screen getting screenshots there is uh, another add on which is called insert learning il okay so what is the benefit of that insert learning if you if you add this add on here i can i think you can see it here all these addons are added this is bitmoji addon this is loom addon this is insert learning you once you click this insert learning it gives you few facilities on website and you can make that website interactive with the students like on website you can highlight you can give here sticky notes like here i have given here don't forget this okay so this is sticky note you can add this video you can add the audio comment okay you can create a discussion box here where other students also immediately can write their opinion what they feel you can here create a question and uh, you can ask students to answer that question on that same web page okay and again interesting thing is this is uh, interconnected with google classroom there is uh, uh, on just single click all this activity that can be linked in your google classroom screen okay so this is an uh, another important uh, add on that i found that i should share with you which will make the things interesting similarly there is uh, padlets are there and padlets you just check out padlet.com 
and you can create wall canvas screen grid shelf back channel okay with lot of facilities right if you connect a uh, few blocks uh, once connect few blocks like in word if you move block that interconnection is lost it's not that interconnection here it is lost that will be maintained in any shape so that makes the things interesting and these all these are interactive back channel back channel is one of the good facility like uh, sometimes students feel that uh, the questioning is uh, they feel how to ask question okay they they feel embarrassing to ask questions uh, back channel gives the facility that if he can post his question uh, which will not be seen by anybody right only teacher can see it and then teacher can answer that one on the, their google classroom okay so that will increase the confidence of students okay so uh, this is what i felt uh, interesting uh, this is an another feature of uh, insert learning il okay on a single web page you can collect a variety of material forming a lecture like here i have done a canvas i have added a discussion box you just drag and drop a link and that web link will be created you can add uh links you can add audio comments you can draw whatever you want and all this is again that can be incorporated with your google classrooms okay so i request all of you just uh, go through this because uh, this this is just a simple narration of the thing that is possible but when you start to and use uh teach teacher and students will surely enjoy this lot of such facilities are there like custom cursor web paint mod kami and jiffy almost everybody is using okay let's add these uh, tools in our daily routine so that uh, our interaction with uh, students will be interactive okay it's more useful more fruitful uh, let's uh, talk about some quizzes okay now when we uh, put a quiz okay uh, of course there is a question of time then we we will say oh uh, your time has start right and then your your time has finished but there are one click web based routines that you can use okay like here one click timer add on okay if you add it to your google chrome just click on it it will give you one minute timer okay and that will be visible to everyone so that makes the things interesting easy polls okay uh, yes we create quizzes okay, but uh, polls will again uh, will make interactive in the discussion okay so you can go to easypolls.com and see uh, how within few clicks your poll will be ready and immediately you can share among the students okay so this is one one minute job just a one minute job and that will add that will involve students in, in the you are teaching learning activities similarly there is a wheel of fortune right so every everybody wants i should get a good option right so you can use this wheel of fortune and um, ask students to spin it and whatever the question comes to him he has to answer it right or whatever the topic comes to him he has to talk on that for one minute okay so this is a very basic level of gamification that can be added in your uh, uh day to day teaching learning process similarly there are various games like pac man game is famous okay uh, if pac man eats uh the right answer okay he will get a uh, one life okay such kind of things are configurable many of you have played snake game if snake eats right fruit means right answer okay yes your points will increase there are such games you can create by your own okay yes lot of softwares a lot of uh, educational softwares they are providing such kind of journeys which makes uh, this journey interesting okay um, like you can see here a treasure hunt and every point 1 2 3 4 5 will have a question and if that question is answered right uh, then only he can progress for towards the treasure and this is a multiplayer now multiplayer means then who answers the question first will reach to the treasure first 
yes that makes it interesting right so you can uh, if you prepare such kind of quizzes and uh, share among your students right there is no need that uh, you need not to worry whether they have studied the concept or not right they will do it okay because uh, this gamification makes them to work for specific achievements okay and uh, we can use that uh, you can apply that similar kind of uh, in technical scenario okay like here is complete electricity distribution is shown and you can have all those points uh, all those questions placed at every point and uh, your game can start and once it is multiplayer right you will see who can do it fast okay and students will enjoy and those uh, who will score good you can put them on leaderboards okay? so that will be uh, also fun and interesting and allow them to repeat whatever times they want right so let everyone everyone should be winner but what it will make them is to uh, understand the concepts right? and finally uh, this uh, i would like to show you with uh, one video of uh, variant limits this is one of the educational game which is of a good higher standard okay just i would like to uh, play that video with you i hope uh, from engineering to medicine to 3d graphics calculus is foundational for all stem careers however Calculus courses today have among the highest failure rates of any course on any campus. And there is a growing body of evidence that explicitly ties calculus to attrition in STEM degrees. At Tricium, our team collaborates with educators to address these complex educational issues and transform how students learn. Welcome to Variant Limits, the first in a new series of immersive educational experiences for calculus students. Variant Limits brings calculus to life by transforming abstract ideas into creative and visually engaging challenges. As an explorer on a planet governed by calculus principles, students will discover a vibrant 3D world. Throughout the world, students will overcome obstacles by applying skills and concepts learned in class. Students will gain a new perspective on difficult topics such as limit laws, continuity, and the intermediate value theorem and use their experiences within the game to construct and retain calculus knowledge. Variant Limits promotes conceptual understanding through direct interaction and immediate feedback in the game environment by providing students an opportunity to take a more active role in the learning process. Variant engages and motivates students like no other learning tool. As students advance, Learning is recorded via the instructor portal, which provides detailed information and tracking tools. A revolutionary new way to teach calculus, an innovative tool to empower and engage students. The first in a series that will transform the calculus experience. Play to learn with variant limits. Yes, this is so one of its kind, which will uh, uh, make you to apply the mathematics concepts to explore a 3D world. So that sounds interesting. So finally, I end up with uh, a quote. It's not uh, only the gamification of quiz. Let's gamify life. Oh, okay. So that, uh, that will be a wonderful thing that we can work out for ourselves and uh, uh, our students okay so uh, uh, that's the end from my side the, these are few references uh, that uh, you can check out and uh, thanks a lot for giving me uh, precious time to share uh, one of the concepts that we are trying at uh, BPKVIT uh, thank you organizers uh, thanks a lot and that's the end from my side uh, thank you sir uh, I request any participant want to ask the question Please, you can ask the question. It's from participants. Anybody want to ask the question? They can ask question. You can raise your hand or you can type your question in chat box. 
Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir, for this uh, wonderful session. I think this is very um, informative and useful session because nowadays in online teaching, it is a critical task to uh, increase the involvement of students in learning. And definitely all these uh, tools and add-ons which you uh, share with us, insert learning, padlets, black, black channel, definitely, sir, it helped to increase the involvement of students. I also thank you, sir. You explain all these pedagogy models for this uh, three years, and definitely it helpful to uh, improve the performance of students. Thank you very much for such nice session. Thank you, sir. Thank okay. you, Gauri, madam, and thank you, your team. Mm. Now, within a minute, uh, we start next session. Uh, next session is on topic innovative experiment on enhancing teaching learning and I am happy speakers of this session is our coordinator of program Dr. A.P. Hureker. So first I will give short introduction of this and Dr. Hivrekar, sir. He has been awarded with PhD degree from Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, Maratwada University, Aurangabad in the year 2008. He has completed MPhil in the year 1995 from same university. He completed his MSc in mathematics from Maratwada University, Aurangabad in 1988. He completed his BSc in Mathematics from Nagpur University, Aurangabad in 1985. He has about 29 years of teaching experience. Presently, he is working as a professor, head of Department General Science and Engineering, EPKBIT. His research contribution, he published 11 papers in International Journal four papers in national journal and he presented 20 papers in conference. He presented his two research paper in international conference, the World Congress on Engineering in 2014 at London, UK. He also completed two research projects. He has reviewed some research paper of, in the journal and conferences. So I list them. The Journal of Bulletin of Maratwada Mathematical Society, International Conference, University Technology Mara, Malaysia in 2014, ICIC at COEP in 2015. He has shouldered many responsibilities in the Institute. I mentioned some of them. Currently, he is working as head of department, general sciences and engineering. He organized more than 20 conferences and workshop. He is also approved recognized guide of SPPU Pune from 2016. And he is also <coughs> chairman of IST chapter. So with this short introduction, I request Dr. Hivrekar sir, please start the session. Over to you, sir. Thank you, madam, for a nice introduction. Let me share my screen first. Yes. Whether my screen is visible? Is it visible? Yes, yes. So, <clears throat> I would like to present a topic 
that is innovative experiment on enhancing teaching learning and this is a paper which i presented in one of the national conference at aisar pune during time 2019 and it was organized by iit bombay so in my presentation i would like to highlight few points then student introduction uh this that is introduction then students problems different methods for enhancing learning experimentation of video lecture statistical analysis and concluding remark i i will make it very short actually i prepared it for one session but due to time constraint i will finish in very short period of time so as i am teacher of mathematics my experiment is learning of mathematics as we know mathematics is a backbone of every science and engineering subjects teaching mathematics is challenging difficult this is a difficult subject to understand it is more difficult for students to pass the examination unable because students are not able to un understand the concepts reasons for not taking interest that is they are weak in foundation of the course like algebra geometry trigonometry derivative integration vectors differential equations as if you look at syllabus is very vast as compared to the level of the students then challenging to weak students to perform well some of the students because of they are not performing well they may lose interest of doing engineering and in between they may leave the classes or they may leave the stream so we have to go to the root of the problem the major problem is we have to look at what are students problem to improve teaching learning definitely students are at the center and we have to look at what are the problems of the students so problem at entry level is a major issue and students are facing many problems when they enter into the engineering college because new college there are new no friends new environment they are staying first time out of the home and therefore it is very difficult for them to adjust with the environment some of the students they are not interested to complete engineering and they are admitted forcefully by parents they are spending some of the student they are spending time in traveling maybe there are family problems some students they are facing health problem some of the students they are very less self awareness lack of relationship with teachers parents and society insecurity about their future many students they are not able to manage time well therefore they are not performing and this is a major issue mobile games that is they are playing on mobile games that's why uh, there is a really impact on the perform pubg game then subject related problems are also there new subjects when they enter into engineering there are mo more number of subjects heavy content of the syllabus high difficulty level weak in fundamentals short period of time in very short period of time they have to cover entire course then new examination pattern because of 12 standard generally there is a examination up to 
means annual pattern and immediately entering into engineering they have to give semester examination that's why we have to see that there are many issues related to students and they are not performing well there are some other problems also not studying properly many students we observe need to improve their study methods not knowing different techniques of learning such as how to learn effectively learn through discussion sharing of knowledge group discussion they are not aware of all this then different methods for learning enhancing learning that if you look at usually we are adopting all these methods lectures practicals powerpoint presentation every teacher used to apply all these techniques we used to provide study materials summary notes then question bank and everything then question paper its model answer question paper analysis assignment use of google classroom or new technology also we are using so while enhancing learning we must propose new challenges we are using proposing new challenges effective use of awards and punishment as per the requirement that also that strategy many teachers used to apply develop good teacher student relationship then awareness of latest updates in the subject then my experimentation of video lectures that i did one and half year back and that i would like to share as we know teaching engineering mathematics to first years i am teaching engineering mathematics to the first year students and we are adopting almost all techniques that we discussed earlier but still some students are not performing well and therefore i would like to see that what is exactly problem and just by observing last batch last year batch after one month of start of first semester i observe that many students are not performing well after taking a review i observe that there are many issues related with the students and after completing two units out of six i took a review that students are not performing well and 90% students they are replied that which topic is difficult i asked the question to them and they replied that fourier series is the most difficult subject as per as engineering mathematics course is concerned and therefore i decided to have some innovative idea so that student will perform well i can help them by through this particular idea so a student replied that they are just by observing as well as just by interaction i observe that students are weak in trigonometry weak in integration derivative variety of the formulas are there therefore they are not able to solve the uh, entire problem of fourier series make mistake while deciding even and odd functions make mistake while applying limits it become difficult to identify which formula is suitable for a given problem they are not able to decide and therefore they are not able to get final answer the solution of the problems are lengthy they replied and not able to get final answer they may make some mistake in between so not able to understand concept properly not able to topic while teaching in regular lecture not able to match speed of learning with the way of teaching during the lecture some of the students may remain absent not knowing importance of the topic less confidence level partial understanding these are the issues so best problem on all these issues that is i have decided to prepare a video lectures so i prepare video lecture by 
considering basics required for the topic, proper choice of the content, then what are the applications that I have to in involve or include in that. Then I selected a method that is preparing a short videos as per the recent research told that the short video videos are most effective. Then I have prepared videos of this introduction of Fourier series, full range Fourier series, half range Fourier series, harmonic analysis and applications. So that is my first initiation and I uploaded it on YouTube. I have prepared my YouTube channel and I uploaded videos on YouTube channel. And I send a message to all students and it is very happy to share with you that my all students, most of them observe the videos and not only once they observe, watch many times and realize the importance of the topics. They find that this new way of learning is interesting for interesting to them and they are able to solve the problems on it. Within eight days, they have given the examination on it and surprisingly, more than 90% of the students perform well in that, in that. Before this particular experiment, when I gave them a examination, when they appear for the examination, 80% students fail. But after watching the videos, 90% of students perform very well. And that was a very good sign for me. And therefore, uh, I have taken a survey what is whatever we are doing, whether it goes to the students or not, whether they like or not. And I have taken a survey where 151 students gave a response. And in the survey, 99% students opinion that these videos are useful for the study. 98% students feel that these videos are useful to understand basic concept of the Fourier series. 90% students feel that these videos are help them to complete their study in short period of time. 98% students feel that <coughs> these videos create interest for learning mathematics. So these are some pie diagrams and the questionnaires are given. Are these videos are useful for your study? 99% student says that Yes, it is useful. Whether these videos are useful to understand basic concept of the Fourier series, yes. 98% students feel that, yes, it is very much useful or useful. Then are these videos are useful to solve problems of Fourier series? 97% students replied, given a feedback that's Yes, it is useful. Whether these videos will help you to complete the study in short period of time, 98% students feel that yes, it is useful. Then I have given one question that does it create interest of learning of mathematics? 98.7% students feel that yes, it creates interest of learning of mathematics. So conclusion from this small experiment, it is not very, I can say very small experiment. They can watch the videos multiple times. They can watch video lectures at any time. We can save their time. It creates interest. Students are focused when they are watching the videos because there is no obstacle for that. When they are watching, they are watching and they are focused. This concept of video lecture is very much acceptable by students. Slow learners, it helps to slow learners. And major problem of slow learners is they are in increasing their confidence level. And surely video lectures will increase their confidence level. They will become active learners. 
help to fast learner because fast learners they get bored and because of slow speed of speed of the teacher but immediately when they watch the video they can save their time and they can do something else increase effectiveness of teacher students and entire system it improves result it save teachers time then we are spending as a mathematics teacher we are spending a lot of time in solving difficulties of the students and personally i feel that i save my lot of time while dealing with this many students difficulty get solved just by watching the videos and that's why that time i can spare for personal growth teacher can spare this particular time for their personal growth so the conclusion from this small experiment is we have implemented for entire all first year faculties and during last year before pandemic we have started this activity as our honorable principal dr bichkar sir always motivate us to do new things and he has given the idea about preparing the videos and for first year faculty in last year we prepare around 500 video lectures and students are very happy by watching all these videos as per as my personal channel is concerned i uploaded 56 videos and i made playlist topic wise i have got 653 subscribers and 40772 views are there and views more than 500 are 34 more than 1000 are 30 and uh, watch time is you can just observe it is 1976 hours in a particular semester i used to take 50 lectures and if i am taking two classes it will be around 100 and now if you observe during one year of time or two semester if you add then it will be around 200 200 hours but these videos are uploaded on university website also and not only my students are get benefited but entire student community is get benefited due to the videos and therefore it is very much essential for us to try for new experiment we are we are always uh, ready for doing many experiments and like one of the experiment is improving attendance we have taken a lot of efforts in last year and we increase our attendance by 5% and that will reflect definitely in terms of the result induction program aict already uh, given compulsory induction program and we have implemented it very effectively mentor system we have and every teacher is a mentor for 20 to 25 students and this system also we are implementing for our first year students we have involved a new concept of best class award so that their group culture will increase and student will perform individually very well and as far as their class is concerned they are ready for uh, performing well in a team and team culture also will develop appreciation of students we have appreciated almost all students those who are having very good attendance we have appreciated them in the first few days first one month if their attendance is 100% we have appreciated just by displaying their names then we have appreciated students just by displaying their names when they are toppers whatever activity they perform and when they perform well surely our team is always ready to appreciate them and appreciation is the thing that everybody likes it 
and why not students? Teachers also, we have appreciated teachers. Those who perform well, those teachers whose results is, is good, we have appreciated them. And definitely that will help us to build a team culture. Effective use of a social media. We have WhatsApp group, we have email, and we are conveying messages, motivating students just by using WhatsApp, email, and other social media. So all these experiments will help us to improve our result. If you look at 2019-20, it is 78.19, all 78.19%. And previous year, if you look at, there is increase in all, the, increase in all these areas, 60 to 69, you can see that there is rise in result of all components. If you just look at all components. Then important factors for improving teaching learning. These are my personal opinions. Update with the technology that is very essential. It is my personal opinion. We teacher must be updated with the technology. Then action research, whatever activity we are doing, we must review that. We must go through that. We must find out what are the problems that we are facing and how we can perform well for the next time. So action research is very important for every teacher. Then experimentation is always required. And let us, we must try to do new experiment and we must learn from that. Research component we must add to our personality. Then health is very important nowadays, is a very essential component. Teacher must have to maintain a very good health and definitely once you maintain your health, you will be happy. So health and happiness, these are very essential component to improve teaching learning methods. So with this, I, uh, yes, one more point. I have got a center of excellence as Rajbir Shastri sir rightly told, ki we have got center of excellences for every teacher and my center of excellence is enhancing teaching and learning. And this entire program is under a center of excellence in teaching and learning. So there are many speakers. They already given their thought processes and uh, all these information and just are very much very useful, useful, useful to all of us. us. So with this, I think I must be thankful to all of you for listening patiently and thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir, for a uh, nice session and sharing your thoughts on this innovative experiment in teaching and learning. I request the participants, anybody want? to share, uh, ask question. Yes, from participants, any participants want to ask the question? They can ask the question. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any participants want to ask the question? Uh, yes. So no question. Uh, thank you, sir, for your session and uh, share your experience on this in innovative experiment. So I want to share, even if this video lecture is small experiment, but result of this video lecture is large and it uh, definitely, it, uh, I am a witness that uh, this video lecture uh, improve the result of our student, improve the performance of our students. And sir, create 
many videos on m1 m2 and m3 topics and all these videos are also i am feeling proud all these videos are also available on sppu pune portal okay so thank you sir for sharing your ideas with us and for this nice presentation thank you sir thank you madam thank you now i request our next speaker so uh, shall we start next session pore sir hi ah, yes madam yes sir Uh, i hope my voice is clear and loud yes sir uh, it is audible and it is clear so shall we start the session yes madam yes so now our next session is on innovative strategies for skill development for students and faculties and for the speakers is mr vishal kore training and placement officer from our institute so first i would like to introduce kore sir in brief he has completed me in computer engineering from sppu pune in the year 2015 he is pursuing phd in computer engineering from gd goenka university delhi He has eight years of teaching experience in academic field and four years experience as a training and placement officer. He is presently working as the training and placement officer in VPKBIT. He has presented three papers in international conference and one in national conference. He has been awarded with Career Guru Award offered by Aspiring Minds in the year two thousand nineteen. He has also won national level award in the category of promising training and placement officer offered by Global Trek Talent Global Talent Trek Pune in 2020. So congratulations sir Now I request Kore sir to start the session or to you sir Thank you very much madam for your kind words and warm introduction i hope my screen is visible to all is it visible madam okay fine uh, first of all i would like to thank the organizers of this faculty development program because it is really a one kind of honor to me to be a part of this particular faculty development program and i know that it's almost 130 it's usually a lunch time for all the faculty members so without wasting a time i would like to start my session uh, today i'm going to highlight the innovative strategies used by vpk biit for the skill development of students and faculty members so uh, this is the foundation of all the strategies we can say that dr r s bichkar is our honorable principal and he is continuously motivating entire team of upk bit to do more and more and to give best so he has proposed one model and we have given the name to that model that is dr bichkar quadrant and you can see that there are four different parts of this quadrant and some sort of uh, skills are mentioned in that particular domain so he has proposed the faster me model f stands for fundamental things about the subject a stands for advanced subjects s stands for skills related subjects t stands for technical subjects e stands for entrepreneur related subjects and activities and r stands for research related activities and subjects 
M stands for management, E stands for economics. So he has suggested, although he has advised to all the HODs and faculty members that recommend the courses related to these main domains to our students so they can become a good engineer. And we have taken his advice and started to implement the new strategies related to this faster me model. So there are a few things which we have done during this lockdown also. And our intention or objective was to engage our students during the lockdown period. We want them to convey the importance of doing the self-paced learning. And hopefully, uh, we have succeeded to convey them the importance of self-paced learning. This is the one of the unique things which we have done. We are not claiming that we are the only institute who, which, uh, who have done these kind of activities. There are n number of institutes in Pune region or in across India who have implemented such kind of activities in their institute also. But by considering the location of our institute and the audience coming from the rural background, uh, we have succeeded to implement these things very nicely and properly. Okay. So uh, first thing which I would like to highlight that is Coursera for campus program. And in this program, uh, we have received 1,500 licenses in the month of April 2020. And immediately after receiving those licenses, we have shared the catalog of courses and the licenses with the students. Students have started to register for that. At initial phase in the month of April and uh, start of May, we have struggled a lot to convince our students to join the Coursera for Campus program to come on online learning platform. And after that, believe me, that students have given the tremendous response to this activity. Once they understand that this activity is very useful for them, institute is giving free licenses, they are getting knowledge from well-known universities and well-known professors, domain experts, industry experts, and also they are getting free certifications from Oxford, MIT, Cambridge, and other universities and other well-known companies. So they have started to give the response to this particular activity. And before this, before the pandemic or before introducing this Coursera for Campus program, I know that entire HOD's entire team of PPKBIT, our principal, sir, we were struggling a lot to motivate the students to come on online learning platform. Okay, because there were n number of reasons. Students were not having the required infrastructure. They were not much aware about the what is online learning and so many things were there. But this pandemic has changed the life of our students. I can say that. Now, what we have done, uh, we have distributed that 1,500 licenses among our students. And I can say proudly that more than 4,500 courses till date have completed by our students and faculties in last nine months. And if we calculate the uh, total amount or cost of these 4,500 plus courses, it is somewhere around 1.3 crore. So it is one kind of scholarship or benefit we have given to our students and faculties. So everyone is very happy. Faculties are happy, students are happy because they are getting such things in uh, freely. Parents are also happy that college have given them something during the pandemic. We have kept them engaged also. So the summary table I have presented here, total course enrollments, 14,281 enrollments by our students. Total unique learners, 1,431 unique learners have joined the Coursera for Campus program. Learners who have enrolled in at least one course, 1,419 students have registered for at least one course. It is a huge number. And total unique courses done by our students are 1,660 courses. Total course completions are 4,510 courses. Uh, it is the number which I have taken in, in the past. Hopefully by today, the count is much increased and the total unique course completers are 600, uh, 862. 
so 862 students have completed more than 4500 courses and if we consider the total learning hours spent by our students and faculties to complete these courses is 34289 hours i hope you can uh, imagine the number is very big 34289 hours training program we have hosted or conducted during this last 9 months from april to december till last week okay so uh, here you can see the trends in the number of course completions week by week you can see that we have started in the month of april so the first bar mentioned in this graph is uh, having the value of 19 at second week of april we have uh, raised marginally reached 30 uh, 63 completions and if you check here that during the peak period of pandemic okay during the peak period of pandemic in the month of may june and july the majority courses completed by our students in these 3 to 4 months may june july and august and after august yes of course this semester is started and that is the reason that our students have stopped giving uh, their time or attention to the courses provided to them through coursera for campus program so i can say proudly that yes our students have utilized the pandemic time lockdown time for skill development rather than wasting their valuable time they have done something which will help them for their own growth next graph is related to learner proficiency by top skills all these graphs which i am going to share with you which i am going to uh, show to you these graphs are already drawn by the uh, coursera itself i am just uh, using their graph and uh, showing to you i am the admin of this particular activity so i have rights to download the graphs so in this graph you can see that uh, where our students are standing and what is the level of their skill whether they are having conversant level knowledge or skill whether they are having beginner level skill where they are having intermediate level skill or where they are having advanced level skill so skills are mentioned computer programming statistical programming theoretical computer science communication mathematics these are the skills which are mentioned on y axis and on x axis number of learners are mentioned and they have used different color shade to indicate the level of uh, proficiency faint color they have used to indicate conversant or beginner level uh, skill of learner or participant and the dark shades they have used for intermediate and advanced level skill set so here you can see that computer programming also uh, majority of the students okay because they are from all the disciplines of engineering in our institute civil mechanical electrical uh, engineering students have also enrolled for the computer programming related courses so at the start of the course they were nothing they were nowhere they they are at uh, they were not having that kind of skills but at least they know about the concept today they know about the concept they are having conversion Uh, level knowledge they are having beginner level having knowledge and some of them have reached up to intermediate level knowledge and uh, few of them have reached up to the advanced level knowledge also so one more graph i would like to show to you this is related to skill mastery over the time our students have given their time their efforts they have invested Uh, their uh, internet and other resources to complete these courses so we can see that where we have started and where we have reached it today so we have almost started from the zero in the month of april you can see that students were not having any kind of uh, uh, skills related to these domains and now 
at the end of November, you can see that uh, many students are having intermediate or advanced skills. So time is or month is mentioned on X axis on and on Y axis. Uh, number of participants, those who are having intermediate or advanced skills I have mentioned. And different colors they have used to indicate the different skills. For example, accounting is there, business is there, communication is there, data analysis is there, human resources is there, leadership is there. One more graph I would like to show to you, and it is related to It is related to average hours spent learning skills by our learners. So this graph shows the average amount of time in hours taken by our students or participants to complete a learning skill. So skills are mentioned on Y axis and on X axis average hours per learner mentioned. So you can see that first skill is computer programming maximum enrollments or students have shown or given preference to complete the computer programming related courses which includes uh, python programming or uh, java programming object oriented programming c programming various programming related uh, courses they have enrolled and completed so here we can say that average time spent by learner to learn the computer programming is 24 hours average timing is 24 hours per learner and the time varies as per the skills and the number of registrations by the students so i like to mention or highlight few top performers because i personally feel that completing more than 4500 courses within a nine uh, months time span is not a joke. It's very big thing. And it is only possible because of the performance we are having uh, from different categories, like students have performed, faculties have performed, and even our non-teaching and supporting staff also given their contribution to make this uh, Coursera for Campus program successful in our campus. So few top performers are Rishi Prakash, he has completed 118 courses successfully. Uh, he is in the final year of engineering. He is studying in ENTC department. Shruti Subhash Narkade, I would like to appreciate the efforts taken by Shruti because uh, she was at first year of engineering and now she is currently studying second year of engineering and she is very bright student. She has shown tremendous enthusiasm and uh, interest to complete the courses. Atharv Anil Patil, he has completed 45 courses. There are more than 800 students, those who have performed well. I cannot mention the name of all the students. That is the reason that I have picked up top three performers of each category. After that, top performers from faculty. Uh, Professor Umkar Girme, he has completed 45 courses. Uh, Professor Shashank Biradar, he has completed 24 courses. Uh, Professor Anil Dislesar, he has completed 24 courses and the uh, top performers from the non-teaching category. Our system administrative, uh, Mr. Sachin Vag, he has completed 29 courses. Uh, our lab assistant, Charudatta Date, sir, he has completed eight courses. Our website uh, website uh, administrative, uh, Swati Lad, Mr. Swati Lad, he, she has completed three courses on this uh, course era for a campus program by using this program so i would like to congratulate all these top performers also and uh, this is possible only because of the uh, cumulative efforts of all the hod's mentors faculty members and obviously because of the students those who have taken the tremendous eff efforts to join the coursera for Com uh, campus program and to complete the courses so one more interesting thing and the uh, one more strategy which we have implemented uh, that is edX online remote access program orap program uh, we have initially received 5000 licenses through edX orap program in the month of june 2020 and uh, i came to know that two days ago on 9th of december aict and edX have 
jointly conducted one webinar for vice chancellors deans principals of different universities and institutes uh, and the sub subject uh, and the topic of that uh, webinar was digitalization of campuses so aict also wants institutes and universities to implement these kind of programs in their premises so it is my appeal to all that if your institute is not implemented this kind of uh, in, uh, if you have not taken this kind of initiatives if these kind of programs are not running in your colleges please uh, try to implement these kind of uh, programs in your institute or university also so here we have uh, received 5000 licenses after that we have uh, distributed that licenses with our students and total course enrollments we have observed are 1669 total unique learners joined the edx orap program are 739 total course completions are 233 and still it continues because courses are starting at uh, different dates that is the reason that uh, course completion count is very less but people are doing that total unique course completers are 155 and total learning hours are around 2148 hours so if we add this 2148 hours with the uh, 34,000 hours which students have already spent on Coursera for campus program. Collectively, it becomes or we will reach somewhere around 36,000 hours learning activity. So the uh, worth of these uh, or cost of these 233 courses is somewhere around 10 lakh rupees. So this kind of uh, costly courses we have given to our students at free of cost. One more thing that uh, AICT is also uh, wants institute to focus on, that is NPTEL program, National Program on Technology Enhancement and Learning. Uh, here I have mentioned a table where you can see that our institute performance or the performance of our local chapter. So uh, in 2017, we were, or we have started to motivate our students, but we have not received the response in 2017. Uh, in 2018, yes, obviously we have taken it very seriously. And in the second semester of 2018, uh, around 544 students and faculty members have registered for the different NPTEL courses through our local chapter. and. Out of that four, uh, 544 participants, seven participants got the gold certificate from the NPTEL. 208 participants got elite certificate and zero participants got silver certificate. So uh, in second semester of 2018, our local chapter rank in India was 56 and our local chapter rank in Maharashtra was second. After this, uh, many autonomous and other private institutes have started to take the initiative. They have also motivated their faculty members and uh, students to register for these courses and the competition is increased with the time. So in uh, first semester of 2019, January to April, total 341 participants have registered uh, for NPTEL courses through our local chapter and 24 students uh, got or faculty members plus students got gold certificate, elite 78 and silver 110. So count is increased gradually. So in again in uh, July to December, uh, 297 students and faculty members have registered for the course through our local chapter and 15 uh, student and faculty members have received the gold certificate, 89 have received the elite, and uh, 65 have received the silver certificate. So uh, we have successfully managed to be or to stand in the top 100 institutes or top 100 local chapters in India and top 10 local chapters in Maharashtra in case of NPTEL. So uh, as Madam has mentioned, 
and people have mentioned that i am a dedicated training and placement officer so i am not going to lose this opportunity to say few words related to the recruitment process because due to the pandemic uh, companies have changed the recruitment style and recruitment methods even the mechanical and civil companies uh, have started to conduct the online recruitment process and this is one kind of change which i have observed to make our industry uh, to make our students industry ready and to face the interview successfully uh, our college and tnp department has started to uh, we have started to take few initiatives and we are doing really few good things which i want to discuss with you uh, we have done tie up with the mcat a1 cookubes and firstnokri.com kind of skill assessment uh, platforms and uh, students are join that particular platform they are giving practice aptitude test branch specific test programming test english test and this is the this is how they are getting the uh, feel of the final uh, aptitude test conducted by the giant companies like tcs infosys capgemini so similar kind of uh, environment or platform examination platform we have made available to our students through this mcat a1 cookubes and first nokri and till that i am feeling very proud to convey you that uh, more than 10 test our students have completed final year students have completed and recently our final year students have appeared for the final interview technical round of uh, tcs also 38 students appeared for the final round of tcs and uh, what we have done before the final technical round of tcs we have organized and conducted online mock interviews for our students and for that we have used google meet and zoom and other uh, cisco webex these kind of uh, tools to conduct the mock interviews or virtual interviews of our students we have shared online study materials also, uh, to our students also which includes uh, videos pdfs web links so they can prepare well and confidently they can attend the interviews uh, one more initiative i would like to highlight here that eclavway test series which we have introduced uh, almost two years back it includes the practice test initially the idea is to motivate our students to do the self study so we are giving them the topic we are giving them study material students are doing preparation and then uh, we are conducting the test so this is the unique thing which we have started in our institute and we have given the name eclavia because eclavia is a warrior from our ancient history he has learned the things by his own so the motivation behind this is to motivate the students to learn by their own don't rely on teachers or don't rely on anybody else you are supposed to uh, take the efforts for the your personal growth as well as your professional growth so uh, that's it from my end and uh, here i would like to mention few things that uh, we have faced so many challenges to implement these kind of uh, innovative strategies at our institute so uh, convincing students to do the self learning is very difficult thing but if you succeed to convince them then uh, definitely students will give you a better response and they will give their 200% to uh, fulfill your expectations uh, dhaman gaukar sir has also mentioned that we are having restrictions we are uh, we are supposed to introduce the project based learning kind of things in our day to day teaching and uh, we should tell our students to learn the additional skills we should focus on to give the additional skills to our students and the only way is to give them additional skills to implement these kind of innovative strategies in your institute there are so many things which we have introduced in our institute tcs iron was there udemy is there udacity upgrade accenture so many companies have introduced the free courses during the pandemic i am not going to uh, explain all these things here but out of that few which i found very effective 
and i have conducted interviews of my students also last year also i have conducted interview before tcs uh, drive and this year also i have conducted the interview of our students the one uh, big change i have realized that our students have become more confident they were looking very cool calm confident during the interview process because they have done some sort of certifications and they are feeling proud that they have utilized their uh, free time to learn these skills or to upgrade their skills so uh, this kind of support i am expecting all of you to give to your students also if uh, this kind of initiative is not introduced in your college i am appealing you to introduce this kind of initiative to your college okay and here uh, i would like to once again say thanks to organizers of this fdp because uh, many stalwart people and well known academicians have blessed this uh, session with their presence and i am very small person as compared to them in terms of experience also uh, so that is the reason that i am feeling very fortunate thank you very much thank you sir thank you very much for this nice presentation and uh, i again thank you sir for sharing their uh, views on this sharing their views on this topic and definitely when sir, uh, uh, sir share the analysis uh, a weekly analysis of this udemy coursera courses and also sir share uh, the uh, toppers list so it will motivate to all the students and it creates mahol like a mahol sir and all faculties get motivated and they uh, again uh, with a new enthusiastic uh, they complete more courses uh, so thank you very much sir uh, and i also thank you sir sharing your views on this point so i ask uh, participants anybody want to share their views Yes. Any participants want to ask? Sir conducted many sessions of skill development for students, and it reflects in our placement. Okay. Uh, so thank you once again sir for such nice presentation and such a analysis definitely motivate all participants and all the faculty members and we feel very proud sir and it definitely benefit all students from rural area also take benefits during this pandemic situation and i am also want to share one of them to take benefit of coursera and edx course Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Now I declare this session is over. Some announcements are there. So now tomorrow there is a first session of Dr. Ahuja, Director of COEP, and after that valedictory function is there from eleven to twelve fifteen. So I request participant those who want to share their feedback, they can uh, inform me well in advance so we can plan properly. After that, there is tomorrow uh, test is there and uh, YouTube live streaming links are already shared to you on a group. Okay, so I request all participants. be present for the valedictory function uh, there are uh, dr pratap se desai director from ist and colonel venkat sir are also with us so thank you so i declare session is over and i thanks to all participants for listening this uh, be with us thank you